August, Austin P has made this 60-minute bus ride with upsets on their mind. Western Kentucky looks to begin their climb up the Conference USA Mountain. Buckle up. We've got day one of college football 2022. kick off a full-fledged weekend. It sounds like, it looks like, it feels like college football again. Is there anything better than college football? Here's Scarborough, who hasn't had many chances on the air. To the house, 100 yards. Over the end zone, Matthews caught a touchdown. Close the fade route, near side, end zone, get it on. What a throw, what a catch. It's not the Dallas Smith, he'll walk in and score. And as he throws, caught. Can he get there? Sack City. Will Anderson storming around the corner. Down goes Bennett. Todd Harris. Corner. Speed on the gas and gone. U-T-S-A. Going to take it to the house. Club lit indeed. This game is everything. This is the world. And that's all, folks. Why college football is the best sport on the planet. And they have been hungry for some college football for quite some time now. Oh, the cooking looks good here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. College football on CBS Sports Network, presented by The Home Depot, Austin P, Western Kentucky. Greetings, folks. Chick Hernandez, along with the three-time Super Bowl champion and college football Hall of Famer Randy Cross. Randy, 229 days ago, Georgia beat Alabama for the national title. Since that time, a lot of coaches have changed spots. Hundreds of players have entered the transfer portal. But, partner, right now, we got game number one on CBS Sports Network. Yeah, you know, since the middle of January, it's been honeydews, it's been news, it's been a lot of things, but, but it hasn't been a lot of college football. Starting this afternoon, it's back. We've got our game back on TV, back in the stadiums, and it's a good thing for it. Western Kentucky, prolific offense last year, but their quarterback, Bailey Zappi, now with the New England Patriots, arguably had the greatest season of any college football quarterback ever. Austin Reed now has a mighty big cleats to fill. Well, almost 6,000 yards and 62 touchdowns, Bailey Zappi. That's why you transfer if you're Austin Reed from West Florida. You go back, you go to the place you know you're going to get a chance to throw. He's going to throw 600 times this year. How many touchdowns? Well, we're just going to have to see. But this kid's got the arm. He's got the swagger. Does he have the calm to start things off? He may be a little hyped. Austin, Pete, there's some question marks at quarterback, but whoever's under center, they better find Dre McCray. Well, Dre McCray, not hard to look at the tape for this football team and say, who do I have to worry about? I worry about Dre McCray, short, intermediate, and long. Good speed, good routes. I double the heck out of him. And if they double the heck out of him and live it, Dre McCray, there's going to be some wide open single coverage in other places. And we'd love to show you some of them big plays. And so here we go. From Houchin Smith Stadium, Scotty Walden, youngest coach in college football, third year at Austin P. He is a dynamo. We'll talk more about him in our discussion this week. I believe the term bundle of energy. That he might is, work. He is the energizer bunny, and his kids really feed off him. And conversely, Tyson Helton, who's just a lot more calm in our discussions yesterday. Fourth season here at Western Kentucky, and certainly you got the football pedigree with his father, Kim Helton, a former college and pro coach. Austin won the toss. We are ready for the season to begin. 2022 right here on the CBS Sports Network. So Western Kentucky gets to see their new quarterback right off the jump. Right off the jump. And the season has begun with a touchback. And so Western Kentucky will start with the football. And Austin Reed, big cleats to fill, as I said at the top, transfer from West Florida. And now we'll take over this, what was an offense last year that was dynamic beyond belief. You know, to, to see almost 6,000 yards passing last year for Bailey Zappi and 62 touchdowns, Austin Reed, his last two full seasons, you know, in 2019 and 21, he threw for a lot of yards and a lot of touchdowns. He's got it in him. 
Just take a deep breath and get off to a confident start. Because arm strength and arm talent isn't a problem for this kid. Well, Austin Reed will start in the shotgun with a trip right. This is a wide spread open offense and then a quick pass on the slot. And they'll get it to the 32 yard line. Take a look at the lineups for Western Kentucky as Malachi Corley makes the catch. And a gain of six. Well, they'll put him down at the 31 yard line. The offensive line for Western Kentucky. Steady group. Ren hits a handoff. I said that with surprise. Dakari Moses <laughs> on the carry. Well, Western Kentucky loves using their tight end, and on that one, Simon, the tight end, was on the right side. He had a beautiful block to really spring that run. Antoine Williams with the tackle and another run. And the stop this time, Josh Rudolph, the linebacker. So as you can tell here, pace isn't a problem for Western Kentucky. No. They run plays about every 12, 13 seconds if they're running ideally. Yeah, if you're going to get up and get a drink today, I would suggest waiting till there's a timeout and a commercial break because you'll miss three or four plays if you do. Yeah, because both these offenses are just like this. They're both pace oriented. Second and eight for the Hilltoppers. Moses in the backfield. The play action. Reed to the middle. Well, that a nice defensive play there for Austin P. Yeah, trying to get that ball to Corley, who lined up in the right side slot, went right straight up the field. He led that thing pretty well. That's just good, good defense. Shamari Simmons on the defensive play. And what did coach tell us yesterday? He wanted to get that defense a little bit longer, longer arms. And Shamari Simmons said, yeah, we're not looking to shut down windows. We're looking to close them. And he did right there. He got six foot and six two safety starting. Third and eight, Reed. Crossbody throw, but he can't quite make it on the crossbody throw. Trying to get that to Belgian. Just, just out of his reach. You flush a quarterback like this, you're a defense, you got to set the edge. Good job setting the edge, making him throw that really before he wanted to. Because he had a wide open tight end. And so it'll be a punt. For Western Kentucky. Tell it on the punt. And a fair catch called at the 18 yard line for Austin P. And so your quarterback for Austin P. Will be Mike Delello. Transfer from Middle Tennessee State, getting his first start for the Governors. Yeah, be smart with the ball. Gonna need a running game to help him out. Don't try to be a hero. You know, his job isn't to spin it all over the yard. Keep this offense on the field and keep Western Kentucky over on the sideline watching. They had Drill and Ellis, who had some issues and then transferred. And so Mike, Mike Delello will get his first start here. Teammates call him intense in the huddle. Out of the gun. Put pass in the flat to the left side. And knocked out of bounds. Did you take a look at the offensive lineup for Austin P. Isaiah Wright, the big left tackle there. Josh Sandel, former Western Kentucky Hilltopper. Yeah, heck of a season. That, fr one fr that freshman year he was here, he was freshman of the year. A little revenge on his mind, perhaps. And quickly put to a stop. Nice job by Ship 97 coming across. Sheds that block, avoids that trap. That's how you disrupt an offense. You just weave through the blockers and keep running till you're running into the guy with the ball. There, uh, Darius Ship on the tackle. Galello now looking deep. And playing center field is A.J. Brathwaite on the interception. Well, he was just waiting back there, Randy. That was not open. Taking that shot. 
needed to take that shot about five yards deeper so only your guy had a chance to just to get it Delello leads it out there good deep what's it what's the term you hear deeper than the deepest well that's it you get deeper than the deepest and then come up get that ball and it's all yours yeah western kentucky's got it going on early college football on cbs sports network is sponsored by the home depot how doers get more done by ram trucks built to serve and by geico save even more when you bundle home and car insurance well 2002 was the ncaa one double a championship for western kentucky it took place in chattanooga they beat mcneese state 34 14 winning their first one double a championship jack harbaugh was the coach back then so high hopes now for austin reed filling in not filling in taking the place of bailey zappi and right off the bat first play a little reverse for the hilltoppers and daywood davis ends up with the ball down to the 35 yard line of austin p and you actually saw a little willing blocking there out of austin reed as that reverse came around number 16 gets out in front he engaged okay. briefly <laughs> briefly Reed, quick drop, cross the middle, and short intended for Joshua Simon, the tight end. Yeah, last year, Bailey Zappi's first year, he'd come from Houston Baptist along with uh, Kitley, the offensive coordinator. He had over 400 yards and seven touchdowns in the opening game against Tennessee Martin. And they were very quick to point out here to Austin Reed, you don't have to do that. You're not. You, we didn't get you for you to be Bailey Zappi. You just, just kind of do you. You to be. You do the best you. Second and ten, and a draw up the middle. Jakari Moses on the carry down to the 31-yard line. You look at Ben Arbuckle, the offensive coordinator for Western Kentucky. 30 years old for Arbuckle. Had a great conversation with him yesterday. Really high on Austin Reed. He loves that arm. He's a pretty high opinion on what this kid can do with it. Third and four. Toppers. Three right out of the shotgun. Zappi looking in a slot. Intended for Michael Matheson. That's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. You know, they had three receivers on this bottom side of the screen, and then they motioned the running back. So they had four receivers to that one side. Really nice job by Austin P of covering, and he really had nowhere to go. Oh, fourth and four, and Tyson Helton's going to go for it. At the 31, needs to get down to the 26. Yeah, this is a good gut guess. You got stacks on both sides. Five on the game clock. Reed, right side. David Davis on a solid grab and a first down for the toppers. And quickly to the line of scrimmage. Well, if you give Austin Reed or any quarterback that can throw this kind of protection, that's going to be the result. No pressure. Draw once again, left side. That one stopped. Be down at the 18 17 yard line. Nice play by Cam Thomas for Austin P, the red shirt freshman of Birmingham, Alabama. All five foot seven of them. There's that same formation again, Chick, with the three receivers to the field side. You've got a tight end up front as a loading receiver there, but four with that running back. Now a little more balance. Second and 11. Up top, man, wide open, touchdown, Western Kentucky. Malachi Corley with his first score of 2022. Well, made him pay off the turnover. Well, Here we go. Yeah. For the 2022 season, we have our first points off of turnover. <laughs> Interception around the 50 yard line. What do you do? You turn right around. Couple of nice crisp passes. 
And you make them pay. You convert a fourth down, which was huge, but it ends that drive with a touchdown. And Braden Narvison now for the extra point. It's up. It is good. And it's 7-0 Western Kentucky. Now Coach Helton mentioned, you know, this whole thing about fourth downs, it's kind of a gut feeling. I'm not a metrics sort of guy. Uh -huh. Well, the gut was right there. He gets himself a first down, and then a touchdown pops wide open in the middle. And if you're a Western Kentucky Hilltopper, you're thinking we might have a quarterback. First quarter here from Western Kentucky, and on the board is the Hilltoppers, seven yard excuse me, seven play, 51-yard drive. Austin Reed to Malachi Corley from 16 yards out for their first points of the 2022 season. Western Kentucky on the kick. And it'll be a touchback for Austin Peay. Tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern, spend your morning on the pitch with CBS Sports Network as reigning champs Celtic face off against Dundee United. Watch the Scottish Premier League right here on CBS Sports. All right, so Austin P wants to get on offense. Mike DeLillo with a pick in his first series. How many series does Mike DeLillo get here? Well, you know, it was, it was a late decision as to who was going to start this. You know, I'd say a quarter or two. Okay. Uh, you know, it's not a series or two, I don't believe. And Sheldon Lehman is the backup quarterback, and a timeout called. Out of a break. Yeah, they didn't have the right personnel, or something wasn't set up the right way. Good, good job by Walden of just jumping in and calling that timeout. Well, Scotty Walden, as you take a look at uh, how close Austin P is, it was just a little 60-minute drive. They came down. It was like a high school game. They came down this morning, had some breakfast. They were talking. I was talking earlier with the radio guys from Austin P next door, and. So how was your drive in? I said, that was good. We broke it up halfway, went to a Waffle House, got a little <laughs> breakfast. That's when you know you're close. Well, Scotty Walton, we talked about uh, what a fireball he is. He's the youngest coach in Division I. Uh, you know, and, and we, we Zoomed with him earlier this week. You know when cats get a hold of catnip? Well, th this was like a mountain lion on catnip. I mean, I could not. I, I wanted to go out and punch a wall after the conversation. He's such a high energy guy yeah he really is big believer in pace big believer in this style of offense though first and 10 from the 25 delillo a little read up the middle handoff to the 27 yard line for austin p that was a long read that ball that ball sat in the belly for a good while cj evans saw the carry for a couple will ignat on the tackle Second and seven out of the gun. Motion right and the keeper from DeLillo. Little fake to CJ Evans. DeLillo yeah, gets it. That's a little bit of why one of the reasons you're seeing DeLillo in here is he's got that running aspect. And Walden has some confidence that that's what he could add and give this offense a little bit more consistency. We've got a hilltopper still down on the ground. A little stoppage in play here is trying to make out who met that's uh, Martin. Broderick Martin, big fella, big nose tackle for Western Kentucky. A little banged up, he'll limp off the field. Well, keep an eye up front for Jawan Jones, Western Kentucky, 34. Best, best player out there on the line for Western Kentucky. Uses his hands real well. He can get up the field. His excellent quickness. Third and four for the Governors. Motion behind. And a quick sling pass. Nice catch up the left side. Got some room. Still on his feet. Down at the 47-yard line. Upton Stout on the stop. But Dre McRae, the go-to guy, for the Governors on the grab in the first down. Very well set up play. Nice blocking downfield. Not too good a tackling job. Keep the pace going. DeLillo looking right. And once again, finds McCray for his second catch of the afternoon. McCray, the sophomore out of Tallahassee, Florida. 
Yeah, we weren't kidding when we told you Dre McCray is the guy that you want to get the ball to him. And if you can, if you're willing to try to prevent that, let's see what plan B is if you're a defensive coach. You know, because McCray can hurt you. Second and two. DeLillo, right side. And a first down for the Governors. Trey Goodman on the catch. Nice job by McCray out there. The receiver, watch him be a blocker. This ball's going to be flipped out there. There's Dre McCray, a little double team. That sets up that first down. That's the difference between these, the, these offenses. You have to be a willing blocker in this offense. First and 10. Slow read from DeLillo. Got some room. He'll put it down on his legs. Slides in down to the 27-yard line. Yeah, it looked like a, a, an attempt at a, a head swat. A little bit. That arm. They don't penalize intent. They just penalize follow-through. Khalif Halasi on the tackle. Second and three for the Governors. Out of the gun. Josh Samuel in the backfield. And Samuel on the carry, the former Hilltopper with the carry. You know, Chick, this is an offense, too. You got to remember, last year, this team went into Oxford, Mississippi and played Ole Miss. And for a better part of a, of a half, they gave Ole Miss all they could handle with this offense. Kind of frustrated. Nico Cooper on the tackle. Third and one. DeLillo will pass or run. Takes it himself. First down. Got some room down to the 21-yard line. That is the X factor for DeLillo. Those legs, as you mentioned. Yep, so early on, you wonder, why is Mike DeLillo, why is he starting? Well, that's why he's starting. He adds that good decision-making process. You could almost see the one, two, three. He got to that pass, that third read, he was gone. Up the middle, Josh Samuel on the carry. Graduate from Greenville, South Carolina. He played his first couple of years here at West Kentucky, transferred to Jacksonville State and now finds himself at Austin P in his final year of football. So far, the, the governors up front, their offensive line doing a really nice job of staying with blocks because guys like Jawan Jones up there, you can lose track of him pretty easy, but they're tracking those guys pretty well. Second and six, DeLillo. Flushed out of the pocket, throws it away. The pressure put on. A nice defense. They're going to call. They're going to call that ground. They're going to know. Quest Evans on the push, the pressure. Very nice. Good job. They're going to check. We'll see the, the officials, our referee, is checking with everybody he can just to be sure there was actually a receiver in the area. There was a defender in the area, and I don't know if he had a, de a, a defender, I mean a receiver with him. That was an offensive lineman. That's going to be grounded. Kevin Bickner, the referee with the call. He picks up the flag. Another look, Randy. Yep. See that duel right there closest to the ball. Wearing the wrong numbers if you're the offensive guy. Not eligible. That makes it grounding. Jaquez Evans on that sack. They call him Donut. Well, you know, there's a lot of white reasons you can get nicknamed Donut. Yes. He got it for a, a really good reason. At the photo shoot last year, he brought a box of donuts, and all the pictures are of Jaquez Evans with donuts in his mouth. And that's, hence the nickname. I would have gotten okay. a nickname that's for a, a far different one. reason. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. So third and 17 now. DeLillo looks left. Little screen right. And good defensive stop there. Josh Samuel on the screen. But once again, Evans on the stop. A little three-on-three -three crime. Yeah, how about how about Josh Evans getting out there? But you come through that block and make that tackle. And that's what football at this level, at any level, is all about. The first tackler. If your first tackler can get the man down, 
you limit your defense that you're going to give up unbelievably. And that's a good job of being the first guy and being effective making that first tackle. All right, Maddox Trujillo on the, the field goal attempt from 41 yards. They call them automatics. Very good last year. Kick is up. And that one's through. Three points for Austin P. We got ourselves a ball game early on in the 2022 season. Coming back on the CBS Sports Network. You see Tyson Helton, the head coach at Western Kentucky. His father, Kim, it's all in the family. Kim Helton, longtime college coach, NFL coach. Clay, the brother, is the head coach at Georgia Southern. And of course, uh, the nephew of Tyson Helton. Turner Helton is a uh, freshman quarterback here on this squad. Yeah, what a great football family. There's Father Kim. They are uh, they are a lot of fun to be around. They, they know this game. We were talking to the coach yesterday, and all of a sudden Kim Helton walked in, which I think was completely planned, by the way, just to meet Randy Cross. And it'll be a touchback. Western Kentucky will start for their 25. The big as 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 O lineman O lineman and O line coaches stick together. Tyson Helton told us. I'm probably the only coach in the country that says yes, sir, no, sir, to my analyst. Yeah. His dad. He said he brought his dad in in 2019. As you take a look at the, look at that, son and father, the last time, the Bowdens, Bobby and Tommy. Absolutely impressive pedigree there. But he said he brought his dad in in 2019, first year as yeah. a head coach, and he was such a wealth of information. And Kim Helton still. He's still at it. He says, like, the day after a game, the day after a practice, he wakes up in the morning and there's a review and grades and everything else for all the drills and all the players. So he's still very involved in his son's program. And his what other son. What a great asset. Clay, yeah. Clay as well at Georgia Southern. So they both get reports on their teams because of the miracle of technology they can watch. He can watch on an iPad and grade everybody. And both coaches love it. So Western Kentucky will start from their 25. Austin Reed out of the gun. A little spin move, but going nowhere is Davion Irvin Poindexter. Yeah, nothing will break up a play faster than shedding and running. You shed through a block or you run through a hole, you're going to be right there. And that's they both happened on that hole, on that play. Josh Rudolph. On the tackle, the sophomore from Montgomery, Alabama. Second and 12 at the loss of two. Reed nearly loses the snap. That one knocked away. And once again, the defense stepping up for Austin P. I'll, tell you, I, I'll, I'll take exception to that because the defense didn't snap that. That's, that's adjusting to what probably should have been a fumble somewhere over his head. Reed does a good job of tipping it back to himself so the normally trustworthy center rusty stats a little errant snap there out of the shotgun it'll be third and 12 with 519 to go here stats took the unusual route of starting his college career at naps the naval academy prep school then ended up here at western kentucky third and 12 reed flag on the play reed right side looking for malachi corley wow that was a nice throw might not matter, but that was a nice throw. Talk about spinning it. Yep. Could have been a formation problem. We'll wait for Kevin Vicnair and company to make a decision. Look at that. But I mean, that's that's not even a window. That's just a, a hint that he might be open. And spinning that thing out there. Oh, you lined up offsides. The flag on Austin P. And so Western Kentucky keeps possession. Maybe third and seven now. And early on, if there is a kind of a, a glitch in this offense, besides the unknown of the quarterback, it'd be the running back position. They're not really sure what they have at running back. Third and seven. Reed out of the gun. Irvin Poindexter in the backfield. Trips right. Reed trying to force one in to Dalvin Smith. 
But the good defense yet again from Cam Ruffin made a couple plays on this drive. And that'll force a turnover on downs for Western Kentucky. See, this is a defense that's very used to seeing the pace style of offenses. You know, these wide open offenses you see so often. So they're adjusting really well. And the windows for the openings are not very big. And Reed's got to adjust a little bit better. On the punt, Western Kentucky. A little short punt. It's going to bound forward and continue to roll. And be down off the 17-yard line. So it looked like a short punt from Tom Ellard. Turns into a pretty good putt. Austin P. Ball coming your way. College football on CBS Sports Network presented by The Home Depot. Back with 4.35 to go in his first quarter of play. And Dre McCray, as we said in the top, is the dude for the Governors. Yeah, he is. He's got a 17-yard run. His only carry so far. And everybody in football is looking for the next Debo Samuel you know that guy can be the slot receiver but he can also carry the ball he can do all the different things first and ten from their own 17 up to the 50 yard punt and DeLillo's going to keep it himself around the left side got some room up the sideline and knocked out of bounds at the 37 yard line a gain of 20 for DeLillo yeah, nice little moves out there. He, he gives him a little hesitation, not quite the fake slide that Pickett did last year in the ACC championship game. That's but, illegal now. Yeah, yeah, well, you got you to gotta see it to call it. The Pickett rule now. So it must be nice to have a, a rule named after you, kind of. You can no longer fake the slide. They'll just call you down. First and 10 from the 37. DeLillo out of the gun. Look at the slow read. DeLillo going to go right side. Catch made, and there's Dre McCray, bounces off a of one, gets to the 40, we'll call it the 44-yard line of Austin P. Yeah, and Dre McCray, he's not the biggest dude in the world. I mean, he's listed at 5'9", about 177 pounds. So that tells you he probably got a little speed to him, but he's obviously got some nice strength, too. Once again, now the give up to the 44-yard line for Austin P. Josh Samuel on the carry. It's his third carry of the afternoon for five yards. It's third and three yeah, for this, the Governors. This long fake and long hold seems to almost make the defense hesitate some, and that's probably the intent. And the quick give this time up the gut and a first down for Austin B. As once again, Josh Samuel gets the carry. We've talked about it. Former Western Kentucky player. Had a great freshman campaign here on the Hilltop. 639 yards led all Conference USA freshmen. Fourth most for freshmen in program history. Once again, he gets it up the left side. He's got some room. Jalik Allen on the carry, or the, excuse me, the tackle. First two possessions for Western Kentucky. Yeah, first one, they gave it a shot and ended up with an interception that turned into a touchdown. Austin P. I meant. Yep. Second and 10 from the 48. DeLillo. And once again, getting heavy work early on is Josh Samuel. Yeah, I like some of the play designs that Austin P has. Nice usage of that H-back tight end movement. Almost looks like a trapper type setup. But that offensive line is maintaining contact with the Western Kentucky defensive line. That's why the run is so prevalent right now. Call it third and one for the Governors. 146 left in this first quarter of play. DeLillo going to throw it right side in the slot. He's got McCray. To the 10, 15, touchdown. On a third and short, the touchdown from DeLillo to McCray. And Austin P has the lead. Well, you remember what I said about first tackler? You get your first chance, didn't get much of a chance. Then after that, there was nobody that was going to make a tackle on Dre McCray. That's why you just keep feeding. 
a kid like this. And this is that's why I personally think you got to double a guy like this. <laughs> you got to go out of your way to take him away. Two point conversion. And they'll switch to a kick, it looks like. Maddox Trujillo on for the extra point. Trey Goodman, the holder. <laughs> that kick is up and good. We got a 10 7 ball game. Look. McCray with the touchdown. You can't catch him here. It's a 10 3, 100 meters. Any space, and he's gone. More coming your way. On season five of Fansville, college football is back and it's total chaos. The conference lines are being redrawn and Fansville is being ripped apart. And nothing. Sorry, Logan, you live in tech country now. But I hate tech. Will ever be the same. Schools are changing conferences. Players are changing schools. What happened to tradition? So hold on to your Dr. Pepper. That's called an off tackle. That's where the running back runs. I know what it is. Did you just fansplain me? I'm sorry. I was out of bounds. But that's where a player I steps know. back. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Austin P comes back with a touchdown drive. And Dre McCray, the recipient of the touchdown pass from Mike DeLillo. Coach talked about it. If you get him any kind of space, 10, 300 meters, eh, it's pretty quick. Yeah, I don't care what you want to call it. If it's yards after catch, if it's run after catch, if you've got a guy at wide receiver or slot, and that is his forte. Man, it's the top makes it automatically even a tougher offense. Austin P will kick. 135 to go in this first quarter play. Touchback and Western Kentucky will start from their 25. Another look here at the score on a third down play. Yeah, quick little flip right there between defenders. And as soon as that ball is, I mean, there's nothing. Only concern is he won't bump his head on the field goal on the goal post. But then you set up with the two point going the other way. Then you shift in here just to make sure everybody's paying attention. Could see something that might be odd. Yeah. No, go ahead and go with no, it. This is kind of Scotty Walden's M.O. He's, he's going to make sure you're paying attention. But right now, Scotty Walden's got to be happy with the way his team has come back after the early interception right now with a three point lead on the road here in this first quarter of play. Western Kentucky now on offense. Austin Reed with the give to Irvin Poindexter up the right side for a couple of yards. And it'll be a quick pace from Western Kentucky. If Western Kentucky does indeed end up taking control of this game, it's going to be because their offensive line takes control of the line of scrimmage. Because right now they don't have control of the line of scrimmage. Austin P is doing a very nice job on this run game. Second and six. Reed right side. The catch down on one knee is David Davis. It'll be third and one at the gain of five for Western Kentucky. I haven't seen that much. David Davis senior on a uniform before. I haven't seen that much. Senior. Senior. I've seen juniors. Not a whole lot of seniors on a jersey. Third and two now. Most likely final play of this first quarter. Reed out of the gun. Up the middle. That's a first down for the Hilltoppers. There's a, little, there's a little control of the line of scrimmage for you if you're if you're Western Kentucky. I said last play of the first quarter. I was wrong. Quickly, they go right back at it. And Davion Urban Poindexter again with the carry gets to the 42 yard line. That Rusty Stats, who's a starting center for Western Kentucky, the coaches talk a lot about him being the leader, kind of the bell cow. Be interesting to see him here during the timeout, during the quarter change, how much of that bell cow has to say to his boys. Well, the first quarter is done. It is. We've seen two touchdowns. A big pass into the end zone by Reed. And a McCray blur for six. <laughs> Second quarter 
We're set to begin here from Western Kentucky. And Austin P has come in here with a spirited offense and defense. Second and seven now for Western Kentucky. Austin Reed left side in the slot. And boy, that was a collision for Michael Matheson. He got met early and hard. Yeah, Reed has to know when you throw those little flips out there, you're relying on the defenders not reading things perfectly. Unfortunately for Western Kentucky, that was read perfectly, and then that tackling form doesn't get any, get any better than that. That's your first defender being one heck of a tackler. Third and seven. Reed, straight drop, right side, and all alone. Plenty of room down to the 30, now the 29-yard line. David Davis, there's that man again. Beautiful job of protection up front and in the backfield. Blitz comes one, two, or picked up. That ball zipped down there to a wide open receiver. Quickly, Reed steps up. Got to throw left side. Wide open. Got a blocker down the field, down to the 12-yard line. He wasn't past the line of scrimmage, was he? That's a good question. Davion Irvin Poindexter on the reception. Nope. Nope. He just got just short of that 30, 29 yard line or so, or 31 yard line when he let that thing go. And so quickly, Western Kentucky moving down the field. Trying to answer the touchdown from Austin P. And Austin Reed right now. Bringing Bill Jan in, their backup tight end. It's a luxury they have. They have two really nice tight ends here at Western Kentucky. Very important to Helton's offense. First and 10 from the 11. Left side. Malachi Corley's got some room. Up the gut. Spins in. Loses the helmet. At least one does, but the touchdown from Corley. Scared me for a second. Thought a head came off. And Malachi Corley with his second touchdown of the afternoon. Well, those tight ends will take you to the ball a lot. Well, Beljan's out there as a blocker right there making a nice block. That little spin. The helmet comes off. If that's out into the field, that play is basically dead. When the helmet comes off or you're dead as a player, you can't continue a, a play without your lid. Well, that was Shamari Simmons who lost his headgear and lost the battle at the collision. Braden Narvison now on for the extra point. And Western Kentucky with an answer, 14-10. So how do you clean up a stat that was three for 10 passing? You do pretty well. Now eight for 14 passing is Austin Reed with a couple accurate hit ones. Western Kentucky with an answer touchdown. Malachi Corley with his second score of the afternoon. It's a four-point lead. Well thought out play. Well designed play. Little backside block occurred where they really couldn't see the tackler was coming from the backside. Good job by Beljan. Can we use Corley's fan up here, by the way? Not allowed. Another lid left. Oh, they are knocking on the field. Have a look here at the touchdown for Austin P. This could be Western Kentucky. Well, here's Beljan. Here's Corley. And watch Beljan right about here on the back side of this play as Corley runs through. Those tacklers you can see are one thing, but the one you can't see, you pick up one of those, that's a plus. Good job by Beljan. Really nice job by Corley running through contact. He won that battle over Shamari Simmons. All right, so Austin P. now. Mike DeLillo has settled in for the Governors. First and 10 from the 22. And DeLillo will keep it himself for a couple. 13 minutes to go here in this first half of play on a hot afternoon. You do that long hold on the fake. It has an immediate effect. Every time you see that, try to glance over to the defense. When you see that long hold, look what the defense is doing. Look where the linebackers, it, it makes them literally almost stop in their tracks. But you really got to sell that long hold too, by the way. 
Second and eight. On their 22 yard line. DeLillo out of the gun. The long hold, he'll throw across the middle. That's uh, a nice defensive play. Knocked down. The long arms of that defense for Western Kentucky. Yep, Coach Summers, the defensive coordinator, he was obsessed this offseason and pounded it into these kids' brains. You got to get longer. You got to play longer. And that closes those windows. I mean, it doesn't limit them. It closes the windows. And that's a big difference when you can get those arms out there and swat those things down. Khalif Halasi, the redshirt junior out of Elk Grove, California. 6'1", 200, and a little bit of a wingspan there. Third and eight. Naked backfield, right side. The throw and catch. But Halasi with the stop. Josh Samuel on the reception. It'll be fourth and eight for Austin P. A nice defensive series for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, this this is this is screaming punt. There you go. 27. You you're right now you're down a little bit. This would be a bad place to take that gamble. I'd still be very aware if I was the punt return team for Western Kentucky of the possibilities of a fake. But you see the personal protectors up there in the front of this punt formation? Those aren't receivers. Upton Stout is back in punt return for Western Kentucky, and the coach admitted to us it's been a bit of an inconsistency during camp as to if our guys can make the plays back there. Stout will catch and run. He's got some room right side. Upton Stout, that's a nice catch and a run down to the 50-yard line for Upton Stout, the redshirt freshman from Houston, Texas, so a positive play in that category. Well, coach had a question. Do I have a guy that can catch a punt? You got at least one, because there's one that can catch a punt while the guy's just screaming full speed, wanting to splatter you right in your face. You I catch might, it anyway and run away from him. I might have looked for a fair catch call there, but nope, it'll be at the 49-yard line for Western Kentucky. Next Saturday, college football season kicks off on CBS for the matchup out west as the new-look Arizona Wildcats begin their schedule on the road, taking on one of the powerhouses in the Mountain West Conference, the San Diego State Aztecs. Live coverage begins next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on CBS from their new stadium. Yep, new stadium. Tune into that, that show. The old stadium, remember Jack Murphy yeah. has Super Bowls and all that. This is the new building in Mission Valley. It's a beautiful 35,000 seat stadium. Ball tipped up in the air and it'll be incomplete for Austin Reed. So let's take a look at the Ram AP top 10 poll powered by Ram trucks. As you take a look at Alabama number one, which by the way, of course will be they are. Austin P's final opponent of the season. Yeah. My my number one would start with that team that's at three. Last time I checked, they were better than Alabama. And Ohio State, you can make a heck of an argument that that might physically be the best team in America. Second and ten for Western Kentucky and churning up the right side. Penalty flag. Some laundry on the field. That came from deep and it came late. That's usually a hold or some form of illegal block. Kai Robichaux on the carry. Let's do Kevin Vickner. Have to say. Tripping. Tripping. Why are you tripping? I, I've been tripping for a long time. So the left <laughs> tackle, Mark Good, on the trip. You never did this, did you? Bottom of the screen right there. Yep. Yeah, you start that extra leg and throw it out there. That's going to end up being tripping. 300 pounder Mark Good with the trip. <laughs> so second and 25 now for Austin Reed. Going to have to churn some yardage. A little motion to Corley. Reed trips, falls, and we'll call that technically a sack. It looked like more of a splat. I don't think splat is a category. It should be. <laughs> Why not? So Austin Reed goes down. It'll be 
third now. That's one for the turf monster. And a bunch. Tyson Helton. Trying to get his offense going. Well, this style of offense, though, you know, when Hal Mummy and Rick Leach and company started this style of offense, big chunks were the reason they were so successful early and are still so successful at all levels of football. We'll give Corey Chapman the sack off the trip. Third and 33, and that's a give up the middle. It's got some room up to the 36 yard line for Kai Robichaux. Sophomore from Columbus, here. Georgia, but he'd be fourth down, fourth down for the Hilltoppers. Once again, Austin P with a nice defensive stand will get the ball back down four. Yeah, anytime you get a series of an opponent and you're on the road and you can get them a penalty and a bad play, their chances of a first down are pretty remote. You are going to get a punt. Cam Thomas is back for the Governors. And he gets hit before the ball hits him and the flags are thrown laundry all over the field just can't quite do that yeah that's a little bit of interference on catching the ball take another look here good to see that he's okay he ducked his head and everything catch his parents number five kicking team 15 yard penalty from the in, from the day ball spot Weber on the transgression. He got his money's worth, topic. though. <laughs> he went he went sideways right into his gut. Rome Weber on the problem. College football on CBS Sports Network presented by the Home Depot. Back here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, as you take a look at the two quarterbacks in this one, Mike DeLillo, who's acquitted himself quite nicely here for Austin P. in the early going. Austin Reed filling those shoes of Billy Zappi. And the and wild card in this is right down there yeah. with the rushing yards that the law has added. Well, he's got the rock and he's under center here on a first and 10 from their own 43. Left side give. Not a whole lot of room as that Western Kentucky offense steps up. And puts a stop to it. It'll be second down for Austin P. To leave Halasi on the stop. Oh, well, there was a gang of Hilltoppers. Second and 11. Delolo, slow pause, drop, forced out of the pocket. He's got a lot of room. DeLillo slides at the 47 yard line of Western Kentucky. You're going to be about two yards short of a first down, but man, that is good composure. He escapes that rush. Rush comes on the right to the middle, and he flushes out right, and he had nothing but green plastic grass in front of him. So. Just short on the slide, it'll be third and three. As Austin Me P makes a late line substitution. And now the referees will officiating crew will gather up, have a discussion about that substitution. <laughs> yeah. Kobe Nash came in late. He's like, wait, was it me? Excuse me, sir. Was it something I said? They told me to go in. Cleared at the helmet came over from the 65. We had another helmet come off, so third helmet of the day. Early season, trying to get the helmet to fit correctly. Once it comes off, you got you're out for a play. Third and three with 8.28 to go here in this first half of play. Austin P and Mike DeLillo out of the gun. Josh Samuel in the backfield. He gets the grab, cuts up the middle, and gets the first down. The first down for Austin P. Look at the inside of this offensive line for Austin P. You've got the penetration by Western Kentucky, but if you can't make the tackle, it doesn't really much matter how far across you get. Corey. 
Moses on the tackle. Short gain, little just inside the interior line there. And Delillo's got no room. Dequez Evans on the tackle. Evans been very prominent here in the early going. That's how you collapse the pocket once that quarterback steps up into it. Naked backfield for Delillo, second and 11. McCray right side and boy, he did all he could just to hang on to the ball, but a quick tackle there for Western Kentucky. And once again, Halasi on the on the ground. Yeah, what, what a nice play, nice fill making that tackle. So third and 11 for Austin P. A lot of substitutions there for Western Kentucky. They've got several personnel packages. They do a lot of substitution. Out of the gun. Whistle blow. It'll be a timeout called for Western Kentucky. We'll take a timeout as well. Sometimes you have so many packages for substitutions, you don't have the right guys in. Early on, this delay on the or the hesitation on the handoff was giving Western Kentucky some problems. The Lolo has got nowhere to go on that run. He gets the ball out of his hand really quick, gets it outside. But this is just excellent defense by Coach Summers' defense, their defensive coordinator. A lot of diversity, a lot of different groupings. I think they might have been a little mixed up on the last grouping. That's why we had a timeout. Early season woes. Seven minutes, one second to go here in this first half. Third and 11 for Austin P. Out of the timeout by Western Kentucky with the defensive confusion. Let's see if they've all got it settled. And the Hilltoppers are coming. DeLillo got no room and a sack. So great defensive effort. Lorenzo Hernandez, the defensive tackle with a great last name and a great play. A gap, B gap, A gap, B gap. Watch the defenders come screaming through those gaps. They start with the A gaps, and they end up in the B gaps. You collapse it like that, that's some really nice defense. Tyson Summers, the defensive coordinator, has got a history back with, you know, Kirby Smart and Nick Saban, that style of defense. And you can tell from all these packages and the different looks they give you in those types of situations. If you followed Georgia's defense much last year, mm -hmm. you saw a lot of that. You saw talked, a lot of that stuff. We talked to Tyson Summers yesterday, and he says he gets to the office about uh, 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, gives himself about three hours where no one is calling, no one is texting. He can just look at his game plan and then yeah, and I, it changes. I, he's pretty safe from the civilized world at 4 <laughs> o'clock in the morning. I'm not calling him. I'm not calling him at 4 15 in the morning. No shot. Unless I'm still up from the night before. Four-point lead for Western Kentucky, who had a great offense last year. I mean, they were just flat-out ridiculous. As you take a look at the numbers, passing yeah. yards number one in the country. I mean, 62 touchdown passes. Is that we're good? Gonna, they're going to get their offense back on the field here. And they can, they can score on any particular play they choose to run. That's the kind of offense they have. Upton Stout is back for Western Kentucky and picks up the bounce. It came right to him. Pretty smart play for Upton Stout. Doesn't let that ball get inside the 10. You mentioned earlier that, you know, Tyson Summers was a little, uh, little. I mean, Tyson <laughs> Helton was a little concerned with who was going to be catching punts for him. I'll tell you what, that one where everybody was screaming in his face, there's a lot of shortstops and second basemen to be proud of catching a brown, ground ball like that. He got 10 yards out of it. I like the baseball reference. And Upton Stout, so far, so good for the punt return unit for Western Kentucky. And they'll get the ball first and 10 from their own 19 with 6.17 to go here. And looking to push their four-point lead. And Austin Reed, that quarterback, 8 of 15 for 99 yards. And two touchdown passes so far. They would take that. Give up the middle. And churning out yards. That's a strong run for Kai Robichaux. Got a governor down on the ground. So Austin Pease, Antoine Williams, the 
redshirt sophomore out of Birmingham, Alabama, who's made some plays this afternoon, is down on the field. Eight tackles and 11 games played last year. Right now, he is down on this field, perhaps a little cramp. It is hot today, around 88 degrees. A little cloud, cloud cover, but Williams seems to be okay as he'll get to the sideline. I got to be honest with you. This is, I would never confuse this with summer. Because summer in the South can get a little sticky. A little sticky. Absolutely. It is 100% humidity. Why? Is it raining? <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, you know you're in an area that's got great humidity or significant humidity when you can taste the air. If you can taste the air, it's humid. That is not a thought I needed to have, Randy Cross. <laughs> Second and five for Western Kentucky. Out of the gun, Reed. Across the middle, a dangerous pass, but it's caught by Kai Robichaux. Not much on it. Gain of a couple. And we'll call it third and two. Austin Reed transfer from West Florida won a national championship division two national title back in 2019 when he threw for over 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns third and two Reed give up the middle strong play but a defensive stop I tell you what that Austin B defense steps up another helmet off but Josh Rudolph making contact at the point of attack. And they're gonna say fourth down. Yeah, I not think very I, long. This is a smart decision here. Go ahead and punt, like we said earlier. You're in a fairly tight game. It's almost gifting a touchdown if you take a chance in this part of the field. That isn't metrics. That's not a, you know, it's not something you go off, you read off a sheet. Tom Ellard will punt. The Australian interesting formation, huh? A little bit. Fourth and inches. Got to be careful. Cam Thomas is back for Austin P. The left-footed kicker gets it away. Thomas calling for a fair catch at the 30-yard line. It'll be we'll call it 32 for Austin P. Austin P. With a chance to take the lead here late in the first half. Western Kentucky with a four-point lead, but Austin P. will have their ball first and ten from the 32. You know, one of the sheer signs that you know college football is back. Yeah. Cliches. Oh. Slogans. Yeah, every coach has got a slogan and a theme for the year. Austin P. has got this stuff on the back of their T-shirts. You just you got to see this. Okay. It's, it's hard to explain. You got to see it. All right. Hopefully, hopefully you can explain it to me. First and ten from the 32. DeLillo, left side, look at it, that's a pick six! Western Kentucky right back in the end zone. On a pick six, DeLillo thought he had a man in the flat, but Upton Stout says, I don't think so. Pick six, DeLillo, tell you what, that's what you call a little confusion. DeLillo playing DeSanta. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. He throws that one, and he makes a heck of an effort getting over there, as he should. But there isn't a receiver there. The only one that's there is the guy that ends up scoring. I... Well, extra point going to be coming up. Cam Thomas apparently ran the wrong route because DeLillo saw something else. Marverson yeah. on for the extra point. Or he's colorblind. And it's good. Fireworks at the stadium. And 21 to 10, Western Kentucky. Coming up, the Ram Trucks halftime report. The crew, Amanda, Brian, Danny Cannell going to preview Florida and FAU right here on the CBS Sports Network.
coming up next. Oh, that was a deflating play for Austin P. To say the least, Chicker Dan is Mr. Obvious. Yes, yes, it's uh, you get it on the side. It's not even worth drawing up on. You know, they got those whiteboards on the sideline with the markers. It's don't waste the marker juice. Those things have a life. Don't waste the juice. <laughs> Mike DeLillo thought Cam Thomas was going to break to the out. Cam Thomas thought he was going down the field. Both, well, one of them was wrong. And Upton Stout with a pick six for Western Kentucky. And Upton Stout's had himself a pretty good game. Two punt returns, smart moves, yep. and the pick six. And the coach referred to him as a little bit of a pit bull personality-wise. And he's been all, all bite and bark. Western Kentucky will kick from the three. Here comes Austin P. Down at the 10 yard line. Take one more look at this pick six. One more time. Concentrate on this area right up here, top of the screen. You're going to see a hole develop, and that hole's only going to have one football player in it. It's stout. Ball enters hole. Hole scores touchdown. That was well put. They're going to re kick this. Cam Thomas offsides on the kicking team. That is a no no. Yeah, that's always worth noting the difference where the ball ends up because they were going to be somewhere the around 10 the line. 10 yard line because of that great coverage. But maybe it was great because they were offsides. But now it's a matter of just add those. Those are kind of the hidden yards in football you, you talk about all the time. And that was Cam Thomas again on the return. So trying to make up for his gaffe, he took one down from the three-yard line. Probably not what you want to do. And got caught at the 10. So we'll see if there's any positive yards now for Austin P. This ball out of bounds, and you'll get some positive yards. Big-time positive yards. So a mistake from the kicker. So instead of being on the 10 yard line, you're going to be on the 35 yard line. That'll work. That gives you a lot more room to breathe when you're on the offensive side of the ball. Kick it team. Ball is placed at the 40 yard line. First down, Austin Peay. Well, he said 40. The ball currently at the 35. It's about to be it's about to be on the 40 last year's rule Riley Stevens on the kick that is not what you want from your kicker after a second opportunity it's a gain of 30 yards Austin P now first and 10 from the 40 4 22 to go in this first half and up the middle Josh Samuel up the gut, Jaden Hunter on the tackle. There's the, there it is. There's your slogan. Chase the lion. Well, I mean, but look at it realistically. Okay. Which end of that relationship would you rather be on? You want to be the chaser or the chasey? Chasey, by the way, chasey, that's where the teeth are. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just rather sit on my couch and watch Wild Kingdom. Get that, get that, get that tiger by that lion by the tail. In order to do that, you got to have to chase him. All right, Josh Samuel on the carry. Jawan Jones with the tackle. It'll be third and three for Austin P. As things have kind of slowed down for this governor's offense. Trips right for the governors. Out of the gun, Delillo. He's going to take it himself up the middle and gets the first down. I was just going to say, that's kind of been the missing part of the formula here for this offense. When it's been impressive so far today, it's been when DeLello has mixed in his runs, getting himself some of those extra yards. The first and 10 from the 48. Up the gut, once again, is Josh Samuel on the give from DeLello. He'll get maybe one. Now we got one on the play. Second down and nine. 2.50 to go. First half. 
And Western Kentucky with an 11-point lead, and that happened quickly. Second down, four players come in with a new personnel grouping. You'll see them, they'll be in a 3-4. They'll look like a 4-3 at points. They'll have two down linemen with hands on the ground. Look like a bunch of linebackers. I mean, it's a, it's a, deep, it's a defense that keeps you guessing. Second and nine. Samuel on the carry, left side. He's got some room. Down the left side. Samuel knocked out of bounds at the 18-yard line. And Nico Cooper on the stop for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, and while you're guessing, they're running right at you. A nice execution up front, especially that left side of that offensive line. Isaiah Wright, Harrison Wilkes doing a really solid job. First and 10 from the 23. Samuel remains in the backfield. He's got the ball. Picks his way through for a couple of yards. His seventh carry of the afternoon for Josh Samuel, the former Hilltopper. You got a governor on the ground. One of the old linemen is hurt. Let's go. Well, that's Brennan Smith. Redshirt freshman from Pensacola, Florida. Down on the turf. Looks like he might have got rolled up on. Dominique Bradshaw on the tackle for Western Kentucky. Yeah, I can tell you from experience, getting that pile rolling up in the back of your legs like that, right, right there in the middle of the screen, you never see it. You can't expect it. You can't avoid it. But it's inevitable. It's going to happen. So Brennan Smith played two games last year. Red shirt freshman from. Hopefully he's he's not injured bad. Like I said, it's happened enough times to me. It, it will oftentimes scare you a lot more than it will hurt you. Because anytime somebody gets in the back of your legs like that, it will it will send get your undivided yeah, attention. Send a shiver through the spine. Well, he will head to the sideline. We'll see who replaces him here with 154 to go from Bowling Green, Kentucky on a beautiful afternoon. A little muggy, but great to have college football coming your way here on CBS Sports Network. How great is this? I mean, you're sitting at home right now. You're about to be through your first half of an official college football game. And there's going to be nothing but college football till the middle of January. Just drink it in and enjoy it. I like it. I like it a lot. Second and eight, 143 to go. Clock ticking. Mike DeLillo looking to get his team back on board. Down 11. Out of the gun. He'll keep it himself. Left side. Churn for New Yards. Knocked out of bounds. Just inside the 15-yard line. Upton Stout. There is that man again with the play. Yeah, when, you, when you're devoted to this style of an offense, it's, it's something that you really have to have is this running aspect in this air raid style of offense. If you've got that added aspect, you can be dangerous. Today's red zone, a reminder, is brought to you by Verizon. This is going to be close. Upton Stout once again on the tackle. Well, he has been active. Fourth down, you're bringing in an extra tight end. Fourth and one, one minute to go for Austin P. the crowd now. And you're in the shotgun. Nope, there it is. Gets under center. Looking for the sneak. He does. Let's see where the mark is. It's going to be tight. No, it's going to be a first down. It's being marked from that far, that high side there. He got it. See, anytime you can't be afraid of a short yardage play that starts in shotgun. But when you see the quarterback run up and get under the center, and then the running backs, like they did right there, they both went right there in a, like a diamond formation behind them. The play that made that famous was Notre Dame USC with the Bush push. <laughs> Back then it wasn't legal. Now you can get away with it. That's why you bring those backs in there. As soon as that ball snapped, their job is to drive into the back of that quarterback and help get the first down. 
you don't mind being rolled up there. 43 seconds to go here in this first half. And they will measure. Oh, it's not going to be by a whole bunch, but he's got it. He's going to have it by about a stripe. A stripe. Are we going to bring out an index card again for the, to, to get this done? Yeah, see the front stripe? <laughs> well done. Good call. Great eyes. First and it's that that second book is that second little push. It wasn't so much the line charge. It's that second push with Delello in the backs with their assistance. Got him that first little step. help. First and ten. Austin P looking to get back on the board and get within four here just before half. Mike Delillo at his first start for Austin P at quarterback. Looking for a little Dre McCray here if you can. Out of the gun. Gonna go right side. You called it, Dre McCray. And just overthrown. But a flag on the play. They're gonna call a defensive hold. A little tuggage. CJ Jones will be the culprit for Western Kentucky. Pass interference. Number 12. Defense. 12. In the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two yard line. On the relief. Halasi. See, you're going to see it right in front of you. Right about the time those the two players, McCraig, and came into view, that's right about where that little tug and that arm bar hesitation was. Khalif Halasi has been a pretty good game so far. Very called good. for the pass interference. And it happened in the end zone, so that's why the ball's where it's at. First and 10, first and goal from the two. 32 seconds left. Samuel in the backfield, the former Hilltopper. Out of the gun. Samuel, the give, left side. Got to bust his way in. Breaks the plane. Wait, on the call. Did he get that over? They're going to say he's down. And Scotty Walden, the... Austin P. Coach quickly calls timeout. Yeah, he wants to give them a chance to review that, take a second look at it. And I mean, it's 22 seconds left. Our replay official Steve Barth will take a look. We shall as well. I thought he got it in, but perhaps the knee was down first. That's what's going to be important. Any part of the body, because that that ball is definitely passed. Look where the ball is. Where's the knee? Okay, I, I see it. Okay, he is down. He's short. Okay. If you throw, if you run that that same play back again, you can see it pretty clearly. There's a knee. The black pants of the Western Kentucky runner Samuel is down. I think it's a little closer to the goal line than that. But his knee was definitely down. Josh Samuel really wanted that touchdown against his former team. Perhaps he'll get another shot here with 26 seconds to go. Austin P has one timeout left. I like the little goal line sugar huddle. Why go? Why be eight, ten yards away? So there's no secret. We're gonna, we're gonna come out in split formation and throw an 80-yard pass. I don't think so. Samuel in the backfield, Delillo out of the gun. McCray split right, and it's going to be Delillo inching his way in. Once again, the referees, and a touchdown is called. Mike Delillo for the score with 18 seconds to go, and it's a five-point game. Yeah, anytime you get in that shotgun formation in this goal line, you know, less than a yard to go. It's sort of the football purist and you gets a little queasy and say, oh, it's an awful long way to have to run. But man, DeLello does a good job. The O-line does a good job. And he's in there by not half a ball, not a stripe of a ball. He's about half a body in the end zone. Same formation lined up again right for that possible two-point play. Now they get back into their kicking formation. 18 seconds to go here in this first half of play. And Austin P has come in here and thrown some punches at Western Kentucky. Trujillo on now for the extra point. Because up, inside the upright, and it's 21 17. That's a nice little belt. 
for Delillo. For the touchdown? For the touchdown. I like that. I think I like it's a little that. too early to be celebrating right now, though. That's a, you know, it's, this game statistically is about as even as the score is. I mean, it's a 21-17 game. You've got right out about 300 total yards of offense in this in this game. There have been some big plays. There have been some big mistakes. I mean, this has been so far, you know, whether you're on Scotty Weldon's side or you're on the other side and Coach on that side, you're, you're looking at mistakes are the difference. And if you're if you're Coach Helton, you're getting in the locker room and you're telling your guys we're the it's better team. Yeah, you saw the uh, number there. Austin P one for 28 one and 20 against FBF schools, but you saw right there There have been some losses for Western Kentucky 2019 against Central Arkansas was the last time So there is a precedent here. Well how you adjust is always very important in any football game But especially an opener like this where you've got two teams from different kind of levels you know, Atlantic Sun, Conference USA, how you adjust and how you come out in the second half will determine who wins this football game. Riley Stevens on to kick for Austin P. That'll go through the end zone, touchback. So 18 seconds to go for Western Kentucky. And they find themselves with a four point lead, 21 17. You're Tyson Hutton, what are you doing here? I keep him guessing. I come out in a wide open formation. I might take a knee, but I'm gonna keep him guessing. Well, I tell you, I just looked at Scotty Walden down there and he is absolutely. He's engaged. Engaged is a good term. That's a really good term. I was gonna use something else, but I like the way you think better. First and 10, Western Kentucky. They got one timeout. And they're going to run this thing up the gut, up to the 32-yard line. They're going in. And Jakari Moses on the carry. And they're going to go in at halftime. Yep, they're going to take it in at halftime, go in with the lead, and make those adjustments. Western Kentucky with a 21-17 lead. Spirited from Austin P. Look at Scotty Walden. Every player getting dapped up as he goes to the sideline. So that's the end of the first half. Coming up, it's the Ram Trucks Halftime Report. Back to the CBS Sportsnet Studios. Right now, Western Kentucky on their home turf with a four-point lead, but Austin P. has upset on their mind Scotty Walden company playing some football. Seventeen Western Kentucky leads Chick Hernandez and Randy Cross, and it's all about the quarterbacks in college football. And we've seen Austin Reed make his debut for Western Kentucky. Yeah, two faces in new places, and right now their places have to be pretty happy with the job those quarterbacks are doing. Austin Reed started this game off a little bit shaky; he didn't do much in the first series or so. But man, once he settled in and started flipping the ball around, he did some very impressive stuff. Got himself a couple of touchdowns here. And on the other side of the formula, Mike DeLello was named starter fairly late in this whole process. But the reason he's in this in this game is his feet and what he adds with his feet. He got the ball to Dre McCray there for a big touchdown. If you're looking for a key to the second half, as far as this football team is, is concerned, the governors have to figure out what they were doing to Dre McCray in the second quarter fix it and keep getting the ball to their playmaker. All right, the stats first half brought to you by Ryan and AP is getting themselves quite nice. They've had the ball for six more minutes. Well, let's be realistic. Two turnovers, both of them scored touchdowns. So without those two touchdowns, mm -hmm. this is nervous time for Western Kentucky. I think it's still nervous time <laughs> for Western Kentucky. <laughs> Certainly Tyson Helton and company going, wait a second, got ourselves a ball game. 
And we're beginning to get a little sprinkle now. Some rain here in Western Kentucky. Little, should, little should, light spritz. Should, should cool things off a little bit. Yeah. Not in the booth. Well, no. No, not in the booth. We're still soupy here, but that's all right. It'll just add to the humidity. What you said. A touchback for Austin P. They'll start with possession. And Mike DeLillo coming off the quarterback sneak at the end of the first half. Did you take a look at the numbers? DeLillo, 8 for 11, 68 yards. Does not account for his rushing yards right there, but there it is, 13 carries for 47 yards. And Austin Reed, 9 of 16, 102. Yeah, I mean, his gross rushing yards, he had 61. He unfortunately also had 14 yards lost as a quarterback with the sacks and whatnot, so they ding you for that. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, keep doing that. Keep adding that spice and figure out how you're going to get that ball to number 10, Dre McCray. Well, you can see the rain has begun here. And on first down, it's a carry for Austin P. Yeah, these are all these are two local teams. Clarksville, Tennessee is a 60 minute drive from here. So heat is never a problem. Humidity is not a problem. A wet ball favors neither team. It penalizes both. CJ Evans on the carry. And he'll this time get it again on the right side and a stop by Joan Jones at the 30 yard line. Here's our Geico difference maker, Jawan Jones, stepping up. Look at the solid tackle. Well, we talk about a solid football player, just athlete, student, everything. Great pleasure to speak with him yeah. yesterday. Everything a coach wants in their, co in their players is Jawan Jones. Third and five, DeLillo on the slot pass. And a nice defense there for Western Kentucky. Good patience by DeLillo there. Did you see Jawan Jones come in from the from the outside? He was flying in the air. He had to literally throw it throw it around the big number 34. Caleb Oliver, the fifth year senior from Tennessee, on the stop. It'll be fourth down for Austin P. And Matt Rigby will come out and punt. So first adjustment, advantage Western Kentucky. They kind of stop the offense for Austin P. Now the next goal for them is how does the offense adjust and can that result in points? Rigney on the punt. That'll bounce forward in their favor. And that ball will settle down at the 22 yard line for Western Kentucky. Tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern, watch the best bull riders in the world join forces for the most entertaining eight seconds you do not want to miss. Catch PBR teams live from Austin right here on CBS Sports Network. You know, I rode a bull when I was in my days in Augusta, Georgia at the CBS affiliate. I rode with, a bull. With his consent? With his consent, yes. With my consent, no. <laughs> Didn't last four, long, huh? It was for television, and it was uh, not a good ending for me. No. Was there surgery involved? A trip to the ER at about 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. 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 A little I, internal bleeding going on. No, not good. I'll tell you what. Not those, a smart move. Those That PBR... Those guys, I admire. Talk about those are guts personified. Yeah, I, I wasn't smart. All right, first down for Western Kentucky. Reed looking up top. Yep. I, I, you know what? That wet ball, David Davis had it in his hands, and it pops out. Yep. And it's, and it's, and it's not like the whole ball is wet. It's slightly inside and underthrown. He just couldn't adjust. He couldn't get to it. And... When you get the balls like this, they'll come in from the sideline. One half will be wet because it's been in the rain. The other half will be wet because it's been on the ground, and the center is going to kind of grind it into the wet ground. So you have two specific wet spots early on until it gets rained so much that it really doesn't matter. It's all wet. Well, Tyson Helton told us, I'm going to let my guy go, my quarterback go if he's doing well. And that was a nice long pass right out of the gate as Malachi Corley on the inside give. Yeah, that was, another, that was another to the – Tackle by the turf monster. We've seen a couple of those. I trip coming up here. It's a long walk up the stairs here to the booth. Yeah, just be careful. It's a longer trip down. That's an excellent point. But quicker. Third and seven. Western Kentucky. Gravity's undefeated. I've noticed that coming out of here. Three wide right for the Hilltoppers. Reed. Straight drop. Going to go up top, left side. 
And just out of the hands of Jalen Hall. He had it for a second, but couldn't keep it. Two deep throws early on for Western Kentucky. And two throws that were eminently catchable. I think the first one just flat should have been caught. The second one, that's pretty doggone good defense. You know, I don't care what you say. I think that defense, you're getting right there where you're supposed to be, and you're going to be the difference maker when it comes to that, that, that play right there. And that's what Ford did. He got in there and broke that thing up. Uh, at the punt from Western Kentucky, and that'll drive Austin P back. Big hit, and now he's loose. He's got some room. Right side, stiff arm down at the 40-yard line. And Cam Thomas trying to make up for the mistakes in the first half with the return right there. Well, that ought to get Scotty, Scotty Walton excited. His offense is going to be on the field. They're going to have great field position. And you get both of these offenses were you know, pretty much air raid based type mm -hmm. style offenses. They love to attack. And these are this is classic attacking offense opportunity. You get a guy like Coach Walden, you, you want to just bang, just go for it. This is a spot you go for it. And if you're going to go for it, Number 10's got to be the guy you throw it to. Cam Thomas, a mistake in the first half, cost a pick six, but comes back with a big return here and sets the governors up first and 10 from the 42-yard line of Western Kentucky. And DeLillo just going to have to throw it away. The nice pressure by Jalen Hall. Check that. Yeah. Well, it wasn't hard to figure out. If you look at the top of the screen here, or the bottom of the screen now, it was top of the screen earlier. Single receiver, that's Dre McCray at the bottom of the screen. You've got two, you've got double coverage right here. The safety over the top is right there getting ready to help, plus the corner. So you gotta go somewhere else besides right here. That's why we haven't seen much from him. Lorenzo Hernandez on that last pressure. And sure hands on the tackle. Short game for Austin P. Juan Jones in, in on another group tackle on that last one. Can he get a little pressure? Third and nine. And I think he can find across the line because Evans, no call, yeah. no touch, no call. And now the flag comes out. Yeah. We had a sudden realization of, hey, you can't do that. <laughs> Mike DeLillo's going, seriously, guys, the guy just came into my backyard. Well, I mean, there was nobody more surprised that that flag wasn't thrown immediately than the guy that was in the backfield. Even Jaquez Evans, who did it, yeah. like, I, I, I probably should be called on me. Evans looked around <laughs> and kind of went, well, I guess I'll, if you're not going to call it, I'll go back over here. So I'm guessing they were going to apply some pressure to Mike DeLillo. Still waiting on the call from Kevin McNair. All side, number three, defense. <laughs> Entered the neutral zone and was touched by the offensive play. Five yard penalty. Third down. Good call. Let's wake up now. Let's wake up. Just a bit offside. And a he smart move. Put your hands out, touch them. Penalty. Never right? really had to move much. Just put the arm out. Yeah. All right, so third and four now for Austin P. DeLillo out of the gun. McCray, wide right, two left. And once again, the slow give up the middle. C.J. Evans on the carry. Just short. He'll be short. Now, unlike, unlike earlier, I like going for it here. You do not have to settle for the field goal. You got the kicker who maybe has the leg. Khalif Halasi on the tackle. They're bringing some beef in here. And look at this setup for Scotty Waldron. Everybody's off the field. Quarterbacks are off the field. Fourth and one, 10.32 to go. And it's Samuel who takes the Wildcat snap. Yeah. 
and gets the first down. Yeah, if you take your quarterback out, you take your receivers out, you bring three other offensive linemen in, and you let your running back at his old school get himself a little play. Derek Smith on the tackle. And now here, you talk about being aggressive. Mm -hmm. On the defensive side, and Summers, the defensive coordinator, loves to be aggressive. Here's where you attack an offense that you're expecting to attack you. Out attack them. First and ten. DeLillo. Well, fake give, and they're going to throw it out of bounds on the right side. And the pressure put on by Lorenzo Hernandez yet again. Second time this series, Hernandez has been in that backyard. Scotty Waldron talking with his quarterback, Mike DeLillo, making his first career start. Transfer from Middle Tennessee State by way of Florida Tech. Yeah, and big 97. He gets up there. He gets your undivided attention. Darius Ship taking up some space. Second and ten. DeLillo will keep it himself around the right side, but that closes quickly by Western Kentucky. I like it. I love it. This is the kind of defense you have to play. You've given a team field position. Be aggressive. Derek Smith and Caleb Oliver very aggressive on that defensive side on that one. And you can be different, aggressive a lot of ways. It's not always blitz and safeties and linebackers. You know, you slant, you fill up gaps, you press that old line back into the backfield. Third and eight from the 28. McCray in the slot. Find him if you're find him if you're Western Kentucky. Delillo, a lot of pressure. Throws it right side, knocked around, and Khalif. Palazzi, once again, all over the wideout. I love this kind of, he, right now he's playing with a lot of proximity without contact. <laughs> proximity Over. without contact. Number 56, offense, 10 yard penalty. Repeat, third down. So Isaiah Wright, the left tackle, called for hold. They're going to repeat this, Randy Cross. Well, Wright is about 6'3", about 260 pounds. And right there, you see that hold, which as an offensive lineman, I still like to refer to that as having a good grasp of your technique. I'm sure you would. I don't think Jaquez Evans agrees with you. No, he does. Third and 18 from the 38 now for DeLillo. Now you're trying to buy it off enough to get yourself three points. Samuel in the backfield. Quick pitch to the right. Trying to find some room. Get some more yards for a field goal attempt. Yeah, you get those little flip screens outside of the receivers, and that whole right side of that offensive line comes screaming over there. If you can get all the way under that offensive line, you can get a long ways, but you couldn't get but past the first or second guy. Cam Thomas on the catch. It'll be fourth down. And they're going to go for a field goal here. Yeah, this is smart. It's, that, it's 49 yards. It's within the realm by a couple of yards. Now, snap, hold. Maddox Trujillo, the kick on the way. And that one is good. Otto Maddox. Otto Maddox. With the field goal. And Austin P within 20. Excuse me, within 20. Within one, 21 20, early going of the third quarter. Maddox Trujillo with the field goal. Austin P on the mend. College football on CBS Sports Network, presented by The Home Depot. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Rogue. Don't weaken. By the Home Depot. How doers get more done. And by Ram Trucks. Built to serve.
Well, you see Jarrett Stearns there. They've lost a couple of studs. Bailey Zappi, Jarrett Stearns, not to mention D'Angelo Malone, the all-time leader in sacks for this team. Stearns had 150 catches last. 150. Triple crown winner. I mean, you come back with guys replacing them in fourth and fifth stringers. They've got some numbers, too. Corley had 73 catches last year, and he was number four. That's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, so we got a one-point game here. As you take a look, Western Kentucky against FCF's teams. This is not out of the realm of possibility. It's, my Lord, the coach, Scotty Waldron, down in the end zone almost. You take a look at the numbers there against FCS teams. It's happened. Well, it hasn't. Since it, they joined the FBS. If there's a chance of it happening here, a lot of it will be because of the enthusiasm and kind of guts that Scotty Walden and his, his football team are showing, but also it'll be a lack of execution from Western Kentucky. That's very unusual for them, especially under Helton. Early season, first game of the year. Yep. Bound to be some rust. There are also a lot of new players. He loves the transfer portal. Yeah, well, th this is the roadrunner type of time in the game where you hear that beep beep and then suddenly the other guy's gone. Well, right now, Austin P is up on their toes. And the quick stop there from Josh Rudolph. Gain of maybe one. And big raindrops right now falling here in Western Kentucky. Big, hard. This is the kind of rain where the ball becomes a fact. A wet ball becomes a fact. The late changes for Austin P. And they are all confused. Reed, shotgun to the right side. And here come the flags. I don't think that Austin P had the correct number of players on the field. I think they might have had an extra or two. There was mass confusion here. That's a substitution signal. An illegal substitution for Austin P. That'll move the line of scrimmage. In Western Kentucky. Go from second and five, second and ten to second and five. Looks like Caden Veltkamp now. Well, that remains Austin Reed. He was on the sidelines and a late addition back to his offense. As the big drops continue to fall here. Well, we've seen Western a lot of Kentucky. Joey Beljan at, at tight end. He's in the wing up there in the top. Third and one. Simon. Reed on a give. A little extra effort, and it looks like he's going to be short. Just short. Davion Irvin Poindexter, just short. Yes, you, t you go for it. I didn't even get the question out. <laughs> hey, Randy, do you go for it? Yeah. Yes, you do. You don't get it, you go for it. From your own 30, we'll call it 34 and a half yard line. Yeah. I mean, Look at the last four possessions for the Hilltoppers. Five yards and three punts. And they'll punt again. They've changed their mind here deep in their own end. So Tom Ellard on to punt for Western Kentucky. 6.04 and the whistles blow. Offense. Delay of game called on Western Kentucky, so Ellard will punt again. So they'll move the sticks back, and Cam Thomas will be on to return for Austin P. Had a good return last time out. Man. It is raining. The rain has come. Temperature dropping. The field is wet. Tom Ellard on to punt. Left footer from Australia. And that's a good kick. That drives Thomas way back, and he'll drop the ball. That ball, and it flips right back into his hands. Thomas. I don't think I've seen that still on his feet now. Move to the left side. Wow. No, you haven't seen that before. 
Thomas lost the ball in the rain and the slop, kicked back up into him. And it's Austin P. Ball. What? Another yeah. look. There, there was an old TV series called Fractured Flickers that had this funny piano music. That's what this, this thing needed. His balls are kicked in the air. He's cutting back. There's tackles missed. He's just going. Wow, are they lucky? That wasn't a change of possession. College football presented by Home Depot here on CBS Sports Network. Back at Bowling Green, where the rains have begun to fall. And all oh, those linemen, they look, actually they kind of, you, you kind of love that slop, they don't you? They don't mind the rain. No. They mind the way they're playing, but they don't mind the rain. Austin P. first and ten, deep in their own end. On the right side, that's the former Hilltopper with the carry. Josh Samuel. See, here's the leader right here. Rusty Stats. And really, the key is for that guy. And the other offense, they've got to figure out a way. they got to sort of get their thing together. Because right now, they're getting stuffed into the backfield. They're getting penetrated. They're getting pressure on the quarterback. It's very solvable. It's not a hard thing to figure out. First and 10, DeLillo throws the wet ball to the left side. And the catch made. So, you know, as it keeps raining, and of course I say that, it immediately starts lightening up. <laughs> They're, the field's going to be wet for a while, so the ball's going to be wet for a while. And especially when you're dealing with the shotgun, remember, you don't always have the, the luxury of grabbing the laces. You're, you're throwing football a lot, and a wet ball gets away from you. It goes high or it goes low. Cam Thomas on the catch. Samuel left side, breaking tackles. Well, he is running with some kind of umph here against his former squad. I what? tell you, you've got to be looking at this if you're Western Kentucky and say, hmm, we don't really have a, a lead sled dog anymore running back-wise. It wouldn't be bad to have him again, would it? Caleb Oliver on the tackle, but Josh Samuel had a great freshman year here at Bowling Green. 639 yards. He led all conference USA freshmen on the ground, fourth most by a freshman in WKU history. But ended up transferring to Jacksonville State. Third and three. Wildcat again, and they don't get it this time. This time the stop right in the middle for Western Kentucky. And Will Ignat on the stop. Yeah, you might think about it, but you don't go for it here. Right now your quarterback's still in there. Fourth and one. And Scotty Waldron. Well, let's see the call here. You might bark and scream and try to get in offsides, maybe? All right, fourth and one, 3.30 to go here in this third quarter. DeLillo out of the shotgun. McCray wide right. They're going to snap it up the middle. That's Samuel. They got it. And Samuel gets the first down. So gutsy call from Scotty Waldron. Yep, yep. I chased the lion right now. Chase the lion. Scotty Walden's football team is chasing this particular lion pretty good. Youngest coach in Division One. First and ten from the 33 now. DeLillo. Slow look. And then Samuel again. Left side. And the stop. And the nice defense from Jaquez Evans, the sophomore out of Dublin, Georgia. The man they call Donut stuffs the hole. There you go. Some would argue that it's not a donut when there's, there's no hole. Is that a knish then? Or? I, don't, I don't know. Let's not talk food right now. Well, I know one thing. Let's, let's, let's talk wide receivers. And Dre McCray, the one who's on the bottom of the screen right here, he's the guy. And that's how they're going to beat this team with big plays and steady runs. Uh, Samuel flag on the play. Holding. A little inside hold. As Samuel with the carry. Holding. Holding. Offense. Take your penalty. Repeat. Second down. Harrison Wilkes called for the infraction. The sophomore out of Germantown, Tennessee. 
Right in the middle. Here's Harrison Wilkes right here. <laughs> it's an influence block. Influence. He was pulling him as he was influencing him, but. I wasn't that close to my prom date during a dance. That was impressive. Second and 10 on the 23. Right side now. And Austin P. willing to take the run. C.J. Evans, the junior out of Mobile, Alabama, on the carry. That'll bring up third. Third and virtually forever at the way they've been running the ball. I mean, third and 13 or so. Austin P. with 159 yards on the ground. Bringing in an extra offensive lineman as a tight end. The rain lightning up just a tad here on third and 13. Just over a minute to go in the third quarter. Mike DeLillo out of the gun. He is brought down. I tell you what. Khalif Halasi is playing one heck of a defensive game. Halasi on the sack did not buy the fake from DeLillo. Well, I was talking about the formation with the tight end. Here comes Colossi. He comes in from that safety spot and just goes screaming in there for that sack. Good timing. Talks about Summers, the defensive coordinator, loves to be aggressive. There's perfect timing with an aggressive defensive move. Matt Rigney will punt. Always iffy here, according to the coaching staff, the punt return. And there's a catch. And down. Trey Goodman. Down where he caught it. It's a one-point game. Western Kentucky with possession when we come back. There's the quarterback, Austin Reed of Western Kentucky. And welcome back here to Bowling Green, Kentucky. Reed described as a gunslinger, gutsy. Guy's got it, you know, plays with a lot of confidence. Got a huge arm. He's going to need to show all that right here. First and 10 for the 29, right side. Got room, nice throw in the wet, and the completion. Wet ball thrown from the left side, left hash mark, all the way across the field, eight, nine yards down the field on a rope. That's a good arm right there. David Davis on the catch. That's his fourth catch of the afternoon. He's got 47 yards. So far, Corley and Davis have got the lion's share of the receptions on this team. Final play of the third quarter, and the Kyle Robichaux with the move up to the right side. It'll be third down, excuse me, second down for Western Kentucky as the third quarter is in the books. Austin P. right now on the road, and they are road dogs here at Western Kentucky. More coming, fourth quarter, right after this. Well, Austin P is doing a heck of a job here. And their coach, Scotty Walden, you got any questions on his enthusiasm? Think these guys react to that? I'll tell you what, they are ready to go. And they don't want to hear about stats. They know it's been a while since they beat a team they weren't supposed to like this. They can smell it, they can feel it. Second and eight for Western Kentucky and Reed up the slot. Third and two on the completion. What kind of pressure now on Western Kentucky? Well, specifically on Austin Reed. I mean, going, going into that play, this offense had 180 yards of offense in the first three quarters. That's very un-Western Kentucky Hilton offensive-ish. Mm -hmm. That's not what they do. Third and three, Reed, naked backfield. He's going to take it himself. Can he get enough room? Yes, he does. Gets the first down for Western Kentucky. Josh Rudolph on the tackle. Yeah, it's getting to that time of the game. I mean, yeah. run, pass, kick, screen, whatever you got to do. That's what you have to pull off. Quick toss to the right side. Up the right sideline and a nice game for Western Kentucky. Michael Matheson, the junior out of Covington, Georgia. 
on the grab. And that's a frustrating thing too about these kind of air raid style offenses. You can stop them and stop them and stop them. And just when you think you've got that thing that under your thumb, they'll squirt out for 10, they'll squirt for 20, they'll go for 40 in a touchdown. I mean, it's, you don't stop them for the whole game. Speaking of stopping, the rain has finally come to a halt here in Bowling Green. Second and three, full backfield, and now motion from Kai Robichaux. Reed, gonna go deep. Looking for Malachi Corley, and a, that's a hold on the defensive side, and now a cramp. Yeah. Two late flags, but the hold came earlier than the flags did. You're right, just from the observation of how that went down and going back to that back of that hamstring. Cam Ruffin, a graduate from Ole Miss. Well, I can tell you. Yeah, so it's pass interference on Ruffin, number one. And they're going to bend that toe back. That's definitely a cramp. Yep. Pump fake. Yeah, it was on the money. Yeah, he's well, got that's, held. That was a smart play by Ruffin. As he was cramping, he held on. And it, it. So Ruffin with a little cramp. Austin P trying to cramp Western Kentucky's style. I can see Western Kentucky and Tyson Hell, the head coach, and his father Kim on the side of Kim. Dad looks a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, perplexed. You, th you think the dad's not worrying a little bit more than the son's engaged. The son's into it. Dad's going to worry enough for both of them. First and 10 from the 25 for Western Kentucky. They've got a one point lead. Left side give, and that's a nice shoestring tackle. Little push there from Samari Simmons. Boy, he came up quick. Beautiful support. That is what a safety should do. When he's coming from that deep area like that and you fill, that's filling with a purpose and a plan. He filled, he tackled, that's one-on-one -on -one tackling. Ty Robichaux had nowhere to go. And Simmons came flying. Redshirt Jr. from Ashland, Alabama. Second and 10, Reed, straight drop, middle. And for the third time this afternoon, Malachi Corley with the touchdown. This one from 25 yards out, and Western Kentucky extends their lead. Malachi Corley had seven touchdowns last year. He's off to a heck of a start right now. And so is Austin Reed. Someone had to step up for the departure of Jerry Stearns, and there is Malachi Corley. 5'11", 210 out of Orange City, Florida. He's got three scores. He's a preseason conference USA watch lister. It's a nice toss. Off the extra point now. That's the kind of answer you wanted to have your Western Kentucky. Braden Arverson with the extra point. And it's a 28-20 lead for Western Kentucky with a big, solid drive from the Hilltoppers on their home turf. The rain coming back. Can Austin P come back after this? Western Kentucky with a 28-20 lead here in this fourth quarter of play. One more look, Randy. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned that offensive line kind of getting their stuff together. Well, how about this group and what it does? They call it a pocket for a reason, because when it's done the right way, that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like right where Chick puts his pocket square. Perfect pocket, perfect pass, resulting in a touchdown. And Malachi Corley's third touchdown of the afternoon. Touchback for Austin P. They get the ball with 12.56 to go here in the ball game. And so Mike DeLillo will research and restart this offense. Take a look now at our pound for pound strongest play brought to you by Rogue Fitness. And that is Dre McCray. I mean, look, he ain't the biggest guy. He ain't the fastest guy. But he gets it done. But for the governors, he's the best guy. 5'9", 177. Those are the numbers on Dre McCray. 
but he's been kind of held in check. Four catches, 59 yards, and the one touchdown. They have been doubling him predominantly since that early good start. First and 10 for Austin P. Flag on the play as they move the left side, a little shoestring tackle. Or else CJ Evans might be gone. We've got more cramping going on. Yeah. Another Austin P. lineman now down on the field. And one of the Austin P. linemen, too, lost his helmet. So that's to be allowed for. So Harrison Wilkes back on the turf, second time today. Isaac Wright was the one that lost his helmet, I believe, 76 or 56. First and five, hands to the face, number 97, defense. 50 yard penalties and force from the end of the run, automatic, first down. And sometimes the officials answer the question. That's how Mr. Wright's helmet got removed. <laughs> the Darius Ship gets called for the hands to the face, and that's a big one. Yeah, when they stick their hands in your face mask and try to tear out your nostrils, you can let them have the helmet. It's on the, on the left side right there. So first and 10 from the 44 of Western Kentucky. They got a couple on the ground for Austin P. Harrison Wilkes checks out of the game with the cramping. Kobe Nash, redshirt freshman from Madison, Alabama, step in at the left guard spot. Yeah, nothing goes longer towards answering a long drive like that and a big touchdown play than a very efficient run-based drive. Second and eight. Delillo steps back out and throws one way out of bounds. That ball looks like it came out of his hands. Darius Ship with the pressure for the Hilltoppers. Chiller made a nice grab, though. That was a perfect pass. Nobody in a uniform had any chance of catching that. So third and eight from the 42. Delello from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Played at Middle Tennessee State the last couple of years. His first game for the Governors. He came in and told the coaching staff, just give me a chance. I'll win the job. Well, he has. A snap, loose ball, fumble, DeLillo, and it'll be West Kentucky ball. Western Kentucky on the recovery. And they've got their possession with 12.05 to go. That's an error by DeLillo as Davion Williams gets the recovery. Well, Summers, the defensive coordinator, loves to attack. And when you get the combination of a mistake a bad snap, you should you should just eat it. Put your favorite condom on a condiment on that football and eat it. Just you're better off not trying to make a play. Delello was trying to do something. That that play was dead once the snap was bad. All right, we're coming back. College football on CBS Sports Network, presented by the Home Depot. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ryan, a leader in global tag services and software solutions. By Verizon, the network America relies on. And by Apartments.com, the place to find a place. And we're back now, first and 10, 12.05 to go. Austin Reed steps up and just gets rid of it just in time. And that'll be an incomplete. There was a receiver in the area. It's about five yards away from where the ball landed. But Reed got that out to the right area. A little pressure there from Chuck Manning Jr. Given name Chakua Mecca Manning Jr. But his teammates call him Chuck. Graduate from Durham, North Carolina. Preseason all Sun Conference selection. First year in the A Sun conference for Austin P. Right now in it with 12 minutes to go. Second and 10. Reed. The give up the middle. 
That'll be a, a four-yard game for Jakari Moses, the redshirt junior out of Palm Beach, Florida. And quickly, they go back to the line of scrimmage. Rain on and off here. Third and seven. Reed, straight drop. Looking deep. What a catch and a touchdown. Daywood Davis. Boy, kept his composure with that ball in the air. And it's a score for the Hilltoppers. When you're throwing the ball down the field, adjusting to the ball is often just the key. The winner is the one who adjusts the best. Davis was the only one that really adjusted on that particular play. Ball was thrown in a pretty decent spot over the right shoulder. But Davis was able to slow down and kind of end up in a half bump as he slowed down and caught that thing. Devin Smith, the DB, was just in no man's land trying to get his bearings. Davis had his. Extra point is good. And Western Kentucky now with a 35-20 lead over Austin P with 11.34 to go. Not long, not long ago, it was 21 to 20. Well, Austin Reed, this passing game, effective defense, smart special teams, bingo, 15-point lead. 15-point lead for Western Kentucky here on their home turf, and they are feeling good right now about this offense here in the second half. Well, they are, and they should be. Their, their quarterback, Austin Reen, has thrown a couple of really nice passes, nice touchdowns. He's getting great protection. They answered that challenge from 21-20. All that enthusiasm, all the craziness on the other sideline hasn't, hasn't much mattered. That ball kicked out of bounds. And Austin P will get it way up the field. There's a flag on the play, so that ball goes out of bounds. Come on back to the 40. And Austin P will get the ball with 11.34 to go. Free kick out of bounds. All right, now it's time for Do Project Smarter, brought to you by the Home Depot. Yes, yeah, Austin Reed and what he's done. Look at that protection, though. I mean, that is special. He's standing back there. Looking, smiling, dialing. He's 15 of 25, about 200 yards, and four touchdowns. So far, heck of an answer. Look at those last two possessions. 25 yarder to Malachi Corley, who's having himself one heck of a day, and then 48 yards to Daywood Davis. Yeah, 14 points in two minutes and 51 seconds. That's pretty good. So Austin P now, Mike DeLillo with a large mountain to climb, down 15 with 11.34 to go. And up the middle to the 40-yard line, Josh Samuel and Talik Allen on the tackle. Second and five, DeLillo under center. And the pressure and a sack and a fumble picked up. Fella. Headed the other way. Lorenzo Hernandez. Touchdown. Western Kentucky. Boy, that's 6'1, 285. Rumbling down the field for the score. And try to do the old Lambo leap into the stands. Didn't quite make it. Yeah, there's a fence there, too. I'm sure they'll take another look, but Lorenzo Hernandez. Seems to have picked that one up and gone in for the score to make it 41-20, Western Kentucky. Well, it's, a, it's a scoring play like that. It will be reviewed. It's a matter of what happened with the fumble. Was anyone ever down? When did the ball come out? Stop. The previous plays on the review. So our replay official Steve Barth will take a look at it. And right now, Lorenzo Hernandez is the toast of the town. It's very rare that a big fella gets a chance to say, rumble in. You want to tell him what it's up now? <laughs> take a look here. Okay, check out what happens with that ball. It's a nice play. He was down. No doubt about it. That, this will come back. You go, you go down there and tell them I'm not, to no, no, thank you. No, go ahead. I want to make it back home safely. Not going to happen. 
Tyrion Thomas with the nice forced fumble or sack. Well, I mean, that, sack. that's this defense in a nutshell. We talked about the derivation of Summers' defense being in that Kirby Smart, Nick Saban kind of vein. That is pure right out of their textbook. Stunts and blitzes and, you know, you get those sacks. That was a blur type of pressure. He came out of nowhere. They've done that a couple times today. Tyson Summers likes to change it up. Three man, four man, five man fronts. And there's Lorenzo Hernandez. I'm not sure he's going to be smiling here in a few minutes. He is woofing right now. He thinks he's got a score. Well, that's every lineman's dream, no offensive question. or defensive. How many touchdowns do you have in your career? You want to go over them again? Sure. We just did. <laughs> None. 11.05 to go here in this fourth quarter as the officials look it over one more time. But it was quite apparent that DeLillo had his knee on the ground before that ball popped yeah, out. It did not look like that ball was moving from the angle that we saw before the knee was down. It's but that's one of the joys of replay. You never know what it is you're actually looking at. Scotty Walton went straight to the referee, by the way, and said, yeah, we need to look at this. After further review, the runner's knee was down before the ball came loose. It's going to be third down. A 10 on the 35-yard line for Austin Peay. Lorenzo Hernandez gets the six taken away. Now watch the knee come down right there. That knee is down. Anything that happens after that knee hit the ground, including that, ball squirting out. Oh, Lorenzo. I can't believe it, he says. Now he's got to rest. All that celebrate. He's got to rest up and come back on the field. He had his people all ready to set the tweet that play out. For those brief couple of minutes, he was going to be in the scoring summary. Delete the tweet. Delete the tweet. No, nah, that, that thing's still going out. If that's me. <laughs> that's, that thing's still going out. Third and ten now for DeLillo. Up be, against it. Be careful with the ball here if you're Austin P. Out of the shotgun. Right side. In the slot, that's a gain of four. That'll be fourth and six for Austin P. Yeah, it's a gain of four, but it was a really nice defensive play filling up there like that. Trey Goodman on the yeah. catch. Just a just a beautiful job. If you're gonna make a tackle like that, make a sure, really good tackle. B.J. Wagner on the stop for Western Kentucky. It'll be fourth down. And Matt Rigney on to punt for Austin P as the rain returns yet again. This one away. And a fair catch called for Western Kentucky. They'll start from their own 27. Coming up next, our coverage of college football continues with a battle between the Idaho State Bengals and the UNLV Rebels, followed by Charlotte taking on FAU at 7 o'clock Eastern. We wrap out west as Vanderbilt hits the road against Hawaii. Catch Ooh. all the action right here on CBS Sports Network. There's Austin Reed having a having a pretty good day. But at tra the transfer process, yeah. there hasn't been another position that's been more affected by the transfer process. These are just the big names. Look at that number right there. 67. FBS quarterbacks change schools wow. in the offseason. And we talked about those games that are coming up on CBS Sports Network. The last one, Vanderbilt at Hawaii. A great quarterback is making his head coaching debut in that Timmy Chang. And 30 coaches, by yeah. the way. 30 coaches. 30 coaches. But, but 67 starting quarterbacks? Props to our graphics man, Andrew Suarez, for coming up with those nuggets. It's a lot of changeover in college football. But we're playing on a Saturday in August. Get used to it. It's just <laughs> going to be more. Wait till all these teams start settling back into their positions. And... Western Kentucky on a second and seven now. Austin Reed in the gun. And he's going to throw here up 15. He's got room and he's got a man across the middle and the catch down to the 40-yard line. 
Boy, he had a lot of room. Yeah, Jalen Hall did a nice job crossing. And give Reed credit for picking him up late, but he had the protection to do it. Still throwing. Reed up top, left side. And picked off. That ball was late. And an interception for Austin P. Yeah, he had protection. He tried to squeeze it into an area where the safety was standing back there and just staring at him. Nice job, really nice job of executing that, getting in front of the receiver and making that interception. And so it'll be Austin P. Ball. Shamari Simmons, who's had a pretty good day defensively with the pick. And the other thing besides transfers and NIL and whatnot has been realignment. <laughs> yeah, look at Sunbelt. After after last year, you lost Marshall Old Dominion Southern Miss. How about the current members that are going to leave for the AAC in 2023? And then the members that are going to join in a couple more years. Wow. Liberty, New Mexico State, Sam Houston, and Jacksonville State all on the move. And there's Dre McCray, who was heard from early on, but They've done a good job, this Western Kentucky defense, of kind of corralling him in. Yeah, they've bracketed, they've high load. They, they have had two people in his kitchen pretty consistently. Surprised that Western Kentucky threw the ball that much up by 15, and it turns into an interception. Now a little backwards toss, little double toss, and wide open on the catch and the throw. Nicely done. And Trey Goodman on the throw, the wideout. Now they're going to call that? That should have been immediate. They're going to call that an unnecessary roughness right there. It wasn't, it was hardly a body slam. Trey Shaw gets called. Yeah, they wouldn't let you in the WWE or AEW with that body slam, but. <laughs> Little double toss, Trey Goodman to James Burns. We talked to Trey, former quarterback. Yep. Turned wide receiver. Didn't I ask him if there was a trick play? Yes, you did. About him throwing the football. He goes, and all he did was smile. He smiled, yeah. Should have known. Should have known. 8.28 to go here. Still plenty of time. Well, again, on this body slam thing, it's just, it's just a safety issue. If it looks like it could be, they're going to call it. After the play, first to five, number seven, defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. So Trey Shaw, the fifth year senior out of Ellenwood, Georgia, gets called for the foul. Transfer from UNC. That'll move the ball down inside the 25 yard line for Austin P. With 8.19 to go. Mike DeLillo, still a chance here for Austin P. Trips left. Naked backfield. DeLillo up the gut. Middle. Touchdown. Austin P. And there he is again, Dre McCray with his second touchdown yep. of the day. They found a way to get him loose, and DeLillo got him at the ball right in a crowd. This is why I questioned throwing the ball. Just a few moments ago from Western Kentucky when you're up by 15. Well, you are who you are. It'd be, I think, my answer to that. Okay. Maybe even Helton's answer to that. That's kind of what they do and how they're going to win in 2000 or 2022. Maddox Trujillo now on for the extra point. Or will it be? Trujillo kicks it on its way and good. Well, the big play on that drive was that personal foul. They called that slam down on the tackle. And then DeLillo just gets in there, and Dre McCray gets his second touchdown of the night. Wow. Good job. Thirty-five twenty-seven, Western Kentucky with the lead. But Austin P. right back. Mike DeLillo to, oh, I tell you what, Mr. McCray, Dre McCray. He's got six catches, 90 yards, and two touchdowns. And they've done a good job for the most part, but mm -hmm. 
He, he bit him right back. Well, you know, uh, he, they found a situation where he wasn't like bracketed or high load, and Delilo found him. He was right in the middle of the field, right between defenders. It was a perfect pass. Austin P will kick. Jakari Moses back for Western Kentucky. It'll be a touchback. And Western Kentucky ball with 8.09 to go here in this ball game. And once again, the rain has subsided here at Bowling Green. Austin P has never won here at Western Kentucky. And look, look at the numbers from first half, second half for Austin Reed, who came out of the gate pretty strong, but the interception late might be costly. You never know. Yeah, I, I, I would think, personally, they may run it a tad bit more, but, you know, who they are is what you've seen. And I don't care how many times you do or do not throw it, bad passes get intercepted, and that was a bad pass. Late? Yep. And underthrown. First down and the run. Left side. Up the middle. Got some room. Almost got the first down. For Western Kentucky and Davion Urban Poindexter. See, now if you're in this huddle, you've been in the huddle during the timeout, you've told everybody, look, we're going to run it some or we're going to throw it some. But when we do it, when we do throw it, once you catch it and you get down, stay in bounds. We don't need the clock stopping. We're going to go down. We're going to score a touchdown. We're going to put this thing away. Let's do it efficiently. Eight carries, 35 yards for Irvin Poindexter. He gets the carry again on the right side and gets the first down. Clock runs and the chains move here for Western Kentucky. Cam Ruffin on the stop for Austin P. And now that pace starts to slow down between plays yeah yeah you're not seeing a whole sense of urgency as far as the pace goes where you're running one every 15 seconds mm -hmm. no, no, no. you're running one every 35 seconds out of the gun Austin Reed you're gonna milk the clock down to eight seconds on the game clock Urban Poindexter a little pistol formation two seconds just at one second, little dish to the right. And look at the move outside. Tried to stay in bounds. But they'll say he moved out, Daywood Davis. Yep. Safe pass, good pass. Let Davis go make a play. That's exactly what he did. First down, Western Kentucky. Now, Simon, the big tight end, is in on the right side, lined up in the tight formation. Austin Reed on a first and 10 from the 45 of Austin P. Let ten. that clock keep going. Last time it was down to one. This time at five, and Reed, straight drop. He's going to go deep. Uh, good defense. Looking deep, incomplete. Yeah. That was an okay pass, and that was really good defense by the Western Kentucky receiver. <laughs> Demetrius that, Ford back there. That was in a position where that could have been an interception again, but used his body to physically block out and get in a position where the defender couldn't get at that ball. Intended for Jalen Hall, but Demetrius Ford comes up with the defensive effort there the senior out of South Miami Florida second and ten as the rain comes back yet again here at Bowling Green and they'll throw again Reed right side got some room Craig Burt on the reception his first of the day Devin Smith on the tackle and I'll see the old saying about leopard in spots this is who they are now they go quick at least for the setup, first and 10 from the 32. Oh, they're not going to snap this thing until it gets down lower. There's no reason to. They'd love to do it earlier. They'll take their time, 25 seconds on the game clock. Craig Burt on the reception, and they'll snap it at 23. Reed will slide underneath, will sidearm, 
and just gets away from Davion Urban Poindexter, perhaps blocked yeah. on that sidearm throw. Didn't little, see the ball coming out of the slot. Yeah, a little sidearm with a little too much heat on it. I, I think it got in on him a little quicker than he than he thought. But that's that's this modern offense. That's running an air raid style, and we see it in the pros now so prevalently, prevalently with Murray and uh, Mahomes and whatnot. They throw off so many different platforms. That's what they mean by those platforms. You got to throw from a sidearm, three quarters, over the top. Second and ten. Austin Reed out of the gun. He'll throw again. Straight drop. That ball gets knocked around. Nice defensive effort. And now a flag thrown. The flag came late. We'll see what the call is. Reed tried to get that ball out. But his arm got hit, possibly going high on the quarterback here. Yeah, if he got around his head, it wouldn't be a good thing. And in today's game, getting down around the, the wheels is always discouraged, too. Well, Kwame Sutton came around the backside and got his hands on Reed. It looked like it was just good, quick pressure. To be honest. There's no foul for an eligible player downfield. The quarterback was throwing it out, out of bounds. Kevin Vicknair on the call. Yeah. So it'll be third and ten now from the 27-yard line for Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers coming off a season in which they won the Conference USA East Division on seven of their last eight, trying to begin this season with a W. I like the ball going down here at the bottom of the screen. They'll go left. Got some room. Got held up. And a flag is thrown. And once again, old pass interference will be called on Cam Ruffin. <laughs> I mean, what, what's the defensive back supposed to do, though? You're running down the field full speed. And that receiver suddenly puts his foot in the ground and comes back. You, there's got to be contact. I mean, it's a foul. I guess all you can really do is be sure he can't catch it. Pass interference. Number one. Defense. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic. Automatic. So, Cam Ruffin from Clinton, Ohio. There it's it is again. Simple. That'll put the ball down in our red zone area, Chick. A reminder that today's Red Zone is brought to you by Verizon. Jalen Hall was the intended receiver, and the coach told us yesterday, Jalen Hall is one of those lights-on players. Doesn't practice particularly spectacular, but when the lights come on, he's been pretty decent today, Jalen Hall. Made some plays for the Hilltoppers. And just got behind that defense. And, yep. You're stuck. So first and 10 now from the 12-yard line. Seven seconds on the play clock. Up the gut, and nowhere to go for Davion Urban Poindexter. It'll be second down for the toppers. Poindexter, Urban Poindexter, 10 carries, 29 yards in the afternoon. Yeah, probably the most impressive runs we've seen at times have, have come out of Austin Reed. Earlier in the second half, he actually had some runs that kind of got his team fired up. Loss of one, 452 left here in this ball game. Austin Reed out of the gun. Malachi Corley in the slot right. Paul underneath. Well, I tell you what, that's a heck of a throw from Austin Reed going backwards and making that throw with some force. Well, don't limit it to backwards. How about backwards, sidearm, accurate? I mean, that's throwing off platform, to put it lightly. What does OC tell us, uh, Ben Arbuckle, yesterday? He said, I've seen a guy who can spin a ball, and he likened him to, and our eyes kind of lit up when he said, like a Patrick Mahomes. He said, in practice last week, he threw a 73-yard post on the dime. He looked at his coaching staff and said, seriously? Are you seeing what's happening here? The guy's got a wing. Yeah, the kid, kid can throw, and he's going to get plenty of opportunities to do it. 
He's got to get the protection we've seen here in the last quarter or so. You do that consistently, that can be a deadly combination for anybody playing Western Kentucky. Four ten to go here. And Western Kentucky driving on a third and three from the five yard line. We've got some. Well, remember, this is Austin Reed, 2019, 4,000 plus yards and 40 touchdowns. I don't care what level you're doing it at. That is a heck of a year. And you see Scotty Walden, the youngest coach in Division One, and Tyson Helton on the other side. A little confusion as to what was going on with the referees and whether it's the timeout or not. John back and forth between player and coaches. But they will take a timeout here. And the referees will convene at mid middle but, of the field. But have, have they? they what? But have they? No. No, they haven't. And the rain once again subsiding here. The college football. Here on August 27th God, has begun. Thank goodness. <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, it was like Christmas morning this morning. I went to the workout room, yeah, was did. doing my kind of thing. Yeah. I saw you. You I were working was, out and I was eating. I was tickled to death. I mean, it was like, ah, oh, it's finally here. Football is here. The game clock and play clock did not start properly or reset properly after the previous play. So Kevin Vicknair has straightened us out here. And we've got some clock issues. 35-27 Western Kentucky lead here. And look at the play clock and the game clock. And something's not copacetic. Oh, man, the play clock moves to I don't I don't know. Well the game clock is currently at 410. Well, that would be incorrect. So they're getting themselves together. You know, it's it's the first game of the season. Everybody's got some rust. That's all. See Ben Arbuckle there, 30-year-old OC, talking with his quarterback. Sat down with him yesterday, and he's got one of those great coaches' voices, just kind of rasped out. Unusual for a young guy, but he's got one of those. No, no, not with the amount of talking and. Please reset the game clock for four minutes, three seconds. Harsh abuse four they can put on their seconds. vocal cords. No question. Some, co not all coaches have a calm style. Sometimes they like to kind of hit things verbally. <laughs> you know, they might, they may get a little aggressive. Some are calm. I remember, you know, Joe Gibbs, Washington oh, coach, yeah. who didn't say a whole lot. It wasn't didn't get a hold you know, didn't never cursed until one game when it just all heck broke loose and the next thing the players knew was there was something being thrown into the wall and they looked up and it was their coach and they just were couldn't believe it and went out in the second half and, and uh, corrected whatever Joe wanted. All right four minutes three seconds the clock has been fixed and now a timeout called. By Austin P. Well, Scotty Waldron clapping. I'm not sure if that was. Now we have a timeout. Now we got a timeout. All right, we're going to step away for 30 seconds as well. If Waldron wants it, I want it too. Coming right back. Here's to those with homework this summer, group projects, and workshops. Here's to those with morning meetings, networking events and Zoom sessions. Here's to those with summer jobs and the truck that goes to work with them. Ram, built to serve. Right now, get 0% financing for 72 months, plus no monthly payments for 90 days on the 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorn. All right, we're back now. We've taken our time out. Four minutes, three seconds to go. Western Kentucky with a lead, 35-27. This one not over yet. We've seen some quick scores this afternoon. Austin Reed, 19 of 33, one interception and four touchdown passes for Western Kentucky. And there is Scotty Walden, who's just a ball of energy. Third and two. 
from the five. Austin Reed out of the gun. He's going to take it himself. Right side. Looking for the extra effort. Not going to get there. That's a stop for Ooh, Austin Peay's yeah. defense. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, this, this is another one of those things we talk about. If you're going to run your quarterback and you're running him out of the shotgun, he's got to go seven before he can get two. It's just math. It's too far away. I, not a big fan, but uh, I like this idea of kicking the field goal and going from an eight-point lead to an 11-point lead. All right. Braden Narvison, one of the better kickers in the game of college football. Short kick on its way, and that was good. So Western Kentucky with the three, lead it 38-27. Back in one minute. The dawn of a new day means one thing to the Ryan team. Another chance to win. To liberate businesses from the burden of being overtaxed, the Ryan team will fight, stand up for what is right, and win. Not because they need another trophy, but because someone, somewhere, is counting on them. That's what they do at Ryan. We have to tell everyone that we just switched to Verizon's new Welcome Unlimited plan for just $30. I've already told everyone. Wait. Did you say Verizon for just $30? It's their best unlimited price ever. $30? That's awesome. Yeah, and it's from the most reliable 5G network in America. For $30 a line, I'm switching now. Yeah, it's easy. And you get $960 when you switch the whole family. Oh, wow, I gotta let my buddies know. We're already here. The network you want, the price you love, only from Verizon. And we're back, and the kickoff and a fumble picked up right side and fumbled again off the kickoff, and it'll be Western Kentucky ball. Wow. Two different governors had possession, and it ends up in Western Kentucky's hands with three minutes and eight seconds to go, not what Scotty Walden would Wouldn't the liked. second one be a lieutenant governor? Can't have two governors at the same time. That's a very good point. Yeah. There's the initial. But there's Ray McCray. There's the second fumble. Now you'd have to probably look at that second fumble as the possibility of the ball maybe coming out after his uh, backside hit the ground. Ethan Castleberry had the ball the second time around, the lieutenant governor. Well put by you. Just one of those inquiring minds yes. sort of things. Thank you for that. You've always been inquisitive. And now the sun is beginning to peek out here. Good timing. Scotty Walden not happy about that, but it'll be Western Kentucky ball with three minutes, eight seconds. So you had a chance. You're down 11, but you can't give up a kickoff return fumble. That's just one of those things that'll come back to haunt you. you look yeah. at the game film on Sunday and Monday. And Dre McCray's done so much for this squad come up with a fumble you know that's going to tick him off something awful the sophomore out of Tallahassee Florida illegal substitution 12 players on the field receiving team that penalty is declined the ruling on the field is a fumble by the kicking team recovered by Western Kentucky first down the previous play is under review Kevin Vicknair Describing what's going on as they now will review. They're going to review that second fumble. So they'll take a look. And Scotty Walden is now just. Oh, yeah. He's at, incensed. He's out to the logo, the CUSA logo, grabbing that defense. But, you know, and not in his defense, but sort of half explained. Three minutes and eight seconds is an eternity. By Western Kentucky, first down. In football. I mean, it is an eternity. So you're down 11 points. Three minutes and eight seconds is nothing. But you've given up the football now and don't yeah. have possession. And that's, yeah. that's the problem. And they know that on the other side just as well. So right. they're, they're, they're going to pad. <laughs> well, Austin Reed, the quarterback for Western Kentucky, 9 of 33, two touchdowns, could be four touchdowns and one interception. 
in his debut for the Hilltoppers. He came in, said, I want the job, and he took it. He's not bashful. You got to say that about this kid. He didn't mind throwing it in his tight spots. On the give, Urban Poindexter up the gut for a couple, and that clock will tick. Two timeouts left for Austin P. Now under three minutes to go. Now here's one for a you know your basic life lesson as an offense. The play clock has to go down. It's not negotiable. If it you snap it less than five seconds, the whole team should have to run extra gas or more, next more week than five practice. seconds. Yeah. You got to let that, and everybody has to know it. The center knows it. The O-line knows it. Everybody knows your quarterback's not asking the ball. Not even going to begin to think about it till five. You know, this one's going to be snapped at two. To your point, up the middle, Irvin Poindexter, a gain of two. It'll be third, and we'll call it five. And the clock ticking now. Just over two minutes to go. And Scotty Walden will call the timeout. Two eleven left here. The Idaho State UNLV game is underway and now available streaming free on the CBS Sports app or at cbssports.com slash cbssn. We'll get you out there as soon as this one reaches double zeros. Yeah, really, you know, realistically, this game started at, you know, 12 o'clock Eastern. Yep. Next game starting at 3.30. Three and a half hours for teams to throw the ball this much. It could, could be a little challenging. <laughs> but it's worked out pretty well as far as that goes for these two. You're at 2.11. Run this next play, making an effective running play. First down, great. Hold on to the ball and bleed at least another minute off this clock. Right. Game clock down, just about to reach 10 seconds. Western Kentucky to trips right form. Out of the shotgun, a little option, left side. Irvin Poindexter, first down, Western Kentucky. New and, little wrinkle to that offense. Oh, and a smart play by Poindexter. Getting down in, in bounds. That was really nice. And it's just a little thing. It's one of those attention to detail kind of things that, you know, these are fast paced teams. So it's the absolute out antithesis of what you're used to. You usually don't pay any attention to the play clock. That's a heads up play by the red shirt junior from Maryville, Indiana. It's a first down with the clock ticking for Western Kentucky. Game clock down to five. They snap. Poindexter up the middle, just churning yard after yard. 130 left in this one. Well, earlier in the third quarter, we talked about that offensive line led by Rusty Stats, kind of taking control of this thing and deciding that they want to do what they want to do. And they have done that. They've protected the young quarterback or the new quarterback extremely well. And they might be threatening to develop a running game. <laughs> Well, they kind of downplayed the running game to us in our conversation yesterday. I think he's playing a little bit of possum there. Well, it's not like it's a huge, I mean, it's 105 yards to this point. Evan Poindexter up the right side. 45 seconds to go. Scotty Walden will call a timeout here with 38 seconds to go. One last timeout. And Walden continues to coach. Youngest coach in Division I. As you take a look at what's ahead for the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Man, you're going to Hawaii next week. Woo! I mean, come on. That's a flight. You've had a wedding there. 
Oh, you had a wedding in Italy. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for me, it's the same thing. A little, a little Big Ten with Indiana. Then they get uh, go back into Conference USA with FIU. Troy go to UTSA. We're doing that FIU game, by the way. You and I. I noticed that. Back together again. They said it couldn't happen. Well, that's a pretty tough little schedule they've got for the season. So last year's uh, last year's nine and five <laughs> with the championship game and the bowl game included. It's going to be a challenge for Helton and company, but this is going to be by the end of the year one a pretty good football team. That appears to be the final play of the game. I like that. You know, not every coach will do that. Not every coach will just kneel down. They'll run another play and try to score. Just go ahead and kneel it. Live to fight another day. You both got games the next week and look at the tape and work on what you got to work on because there's going to be plenty of stuff to work on. Well, there's plenty of positives for Austin P to come in here and make this a game until the latter part of the fourth quarter. And for Western Kentucky, they get the win. 38-27. For Randy Cross and our entire crew, I'm Chick Hernandez. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network. The Hilltoppers, 38-27 over Austin P. When we come up next, Dante Whitner, Chris Lewis, Idaho State, and UNLV.